boy in our E man right now. When it comes to HD, we that title subscription. We on title, man. You can catch us early over there. Title.com forward slash drink champs. 60 days off. Let's go. And we might give you a, a deal if you say you could cut, cut my toenails. Don't do it. One love. <laughs> What it could be, hopefully it's what it should be. This is your boy N-O-R-E. What up, it's DJ EFN. And this is Drink Champs Happy Hour, Military Crazy War Radio, and a bunch of other shit put together. This is hip hop. Make some motherfucking hey! noise! Now, right now, we have a real combination. We have hip hop royalty and comedy royalty. On one hand, we have a man who's broke barriers. I've been watching him all day today. He has jokes, Irish jokes. He has Indian jokes. He has Arab jokes. He has black jokes. He has white jokes. And all of them actually come out to see him. It was the most amazing thing. When I went through all of his catalog today, I said he has the United Nations of fans. <laughs> this shit is hard. Then on the other hand, you have a, a brother who is hip-hop royalty. I mean, Relentless has been there. I was watching his interviews today, and it was crazy because when he actually spit, like, when he spits during, like, you can tell that's where he's more comfortable at. Like, instead of talking, like, he loves to spit. So I was just watching. I'm like, after all these years, all this time, for a man to still, you know, love the game like this, he writes, he, he engineers, produces himself. So these are two legends and two different worlds, and I'm so glad that they came together. If you don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about a comedian, Russell Peters. Make some noise! Yeah. And we're also talking about royalty, the uh, uh, king shit right here. You know, Freddie Fox, Bumpy Nuffins. Yeah. Make some noise! Yeah. First of all, let's pick up the Best Buy Liquors because uh, we finally got the water on the Ciroc, who's Woo. out here hating. Best Buy Liquors. Out here hating. How we out here making this money with Revolt and don't have none. You know, I think this is the first time we should set, set it off with a shot. Can we do that, Mr. Yeah, Lee? Can we do that? Yo, you acting like you you running the camera. Like, <laughs> come on, brother. You don't look like you're just staring at you. You don't even look like you should. Come on. The videos do not belong over there. Can we get let's start it over for a second? Because you know what? Tiger Bone, we do Tiger Bone. Water, watermelon. Watermelon. Oh no, I prefer Tiger Bone then. Oh no, no disrespect to the No, no, I'll say that. I'm gonna do watermelon. Let's do watermelon. I'll do a Colombian wine. Okay, that's 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 fair enough. So um I want to take it, because like I said, today I wanted to go through, because I, I, knew, I knew you as a person, I knew you as a hip-hop, I don't want to say ambassador, but a, like a hip-hop friend, like a person that's, uh, you know, that no, he is hip-hop. No, 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 <laughs> exactly, but what I'm saying is, is, is it embraces the culture, he has a whole other job. I seen you with a party with Cool Herc that was there, uh, Melly Mel, and so the thing is, I was going through everything that, you know, um, I, I could, I can go through and one of the things is you have the most diverse audience like ever that's the goal but how the fuck do you do that I, I have like, no clue how I did it but, like, like, but like, now that I got it I'm trying to keep it <laughs> right, right, right. And, and isn't that hip hop that's hip well yeah. that's what it starts as you know it starts yeah. as one group and then it spreads right. because I, obviously the majority of the people who come see you are Indian uh, no, not not any, not not necessarily the majority. Because there's different people. Like yeah, you know, like um, you have the A rap. Is it, I'm not saying that correct. Because I don't. No, I don't it, it sounds fucked up, but it's funny. <laughs> if you're saying it's all A rap money, then maybe you're saying it correct. No, because no, 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 because you kept saying what kind of. Uh, um, what kind of Arab are you? Yeah, you, Arab, yeah because you know, Arab. I mean, EFN look Arab as fuck. <laughs> I do. Yeah. After 9 11, before that, I was oh, Mexican and Puerto Rican. No, no, okay. real talk. You, okay. I'm Cuban. I'm Cuban. Okay. No, I'm Cuban. So you're a good swimmer. Okay. Man, I'm all day long. Where is this shot? Where is this shot? Is this shot? <laughs> you don't want watermelon? I'm not eating watermelon one time. You can't eat kiwi. Never thought I'd have this on Earth. That's a great story, buddy. I drink my own product. I drink my own product. I don't think he'll get mad at that. Salute, so, listen, I don't know if y'all know, but this is about saluting people okay. career, giving them their flowers where they can Cheers, where they can smell them, they trees where they can and hell them, they thoughts where they can think them, and they drinks where they can drink them. Ah, now, Freddie Fox, moving on to you. Woo. You have one of the most illest careers as well, meaning you actually produce your own shit. You actually write, engineer. Mm -hmm. you, 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 every part of the aspect of the game. How, how 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 did how did you develop that mentality of being so hands on with your stuff? Um, I, I think it happened because in, I started to notice that you know when you start seeing people do things that just don't are not consistent with how you move. Mm -hmm. I, I started trying to teach myself twenty years before mm -hmm. 
I needed to know it, mm -hmm. how to do it. So then in 20 years, when I want to still be making music, I didn't have to depend on somebody to mm -hmm. book studio time for me. Uh, I was wait, you know, people got other projects. I didn't want to wait for beats. Self-sufficiency. I just fi right. I figured if I start teaching myself how to be uh, uh, self-contained, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have to wait around for people to, you know, so I started investing in myself. Mm -hmm. Studio, I, should I had a studio when Cass was still trying to figure out how to get studio your house, yeah, in, my, in the crib, wow. yeah. But how long into your career did you start doing that? Right away, like right away, mm -hmm. like power play days. Remember power, power play, play days? Like, yeah. like power play days. I, I, I like immediately before me and Eric B. Oh. Nah, after Eric B, but pa okay. power play days, you know, you know power play. I hate, I hate when he opens the same. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know power play yeah, days, you know. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Power play, that, that's like, I immediately felt like my arms got big because you had to carry them rails. Yeah. <laughs> them yeah. rails. Like, the rail, the rail these motherfuckers with this internet shit, y'all got it so lucky. Yeah. Like, yo, you used to have to carry little dolls to the studio. Yeah. It was so heavy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah you know, pay a couple, like 100, 100, $15, $140, $140 for a two inch tape. And I started realizing, you know what? There's gonna be a time that's gonna come when. You know, this is we're not gonna have labels that's gonna give us budgets or right. whatever mm -hmm. the case like that. And and I just started just saying, you know what? Let me just start learning that. So Herbie Lovebug lent me a MPC three wow. thousand, three MPC uh, sixty or three thousand, and I mm -hmm. and I practiced on it until I learned how to make beats. And then I made a couple beats, sold them. Then I made enough money to buy my own. And then you know, just, I wrote the Salt and Pepper album. You you I wrote What a Man. Oh shit, I was right. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote None of Your Business, Big Shot, Groove Me, all of those wow. songs and stuff like that. So I started making money and buying my own stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I just wanted to know how to do it on my own. Cause mm -hmm. when you really love what you do, you teach yourself how to be the best at it. You know, and I'm I still I'm still learning because because you know it's always constantly a, a, a process, you know. Now, how was it um, the relationship with Flavor Unit? Because I know at some point you guys was was there, but then you, you like separated and started to do your own thing. Well, I mean, in the beginning, it, it, you know, I was really really comfortable there, you know. Uh -huh. And then, um, you know, business happens, things happen, and then it just went went crazy because I think they got overwhelmed with all of these artists, you know. And I had in '93. When I did 1993, I, I did Hot Potato with Naughty by Nature. Right, that, that was on, on yeah, there. Yeah. And that was actually, I recorded actually in 92. Wow. But it, they, it was 1993 album. And when they, they put it out, that's what got me to look for. That's what Shaq Kim and them started. Yeah, Shaq Kim wanted to sign me because they saw, they asked me to come to a show. I performed. It was a very commanding performance. I don't think they were really used to seeing MCs just step to a spot on the stage and give it to the audience. You know, right. nowadays you watch cats perform, they right. turn in their back, they right. looking at their phone. They're not even looking. They're rapping they're into like their phone and shit like that. They you confidence know. in yeah, you. Yeah, know, you yeah, from yeah, the era yeah, yeah, so yeah, you yeah, know yeah. you have to get out there the and, and, and right. give, give the audience, mm -hmm. you know, give the mm -hmm. audience what you what you came to give them. And it, First of all, you had to kind of let the audience know that you wasn't scared of them oh. because everybody was just tough at that time. Yeah, so if you came out like a sucker, the audience treats you like a sucker. I imagine, is that like that in comedy? I'm the same. I mean, it depends on the rooms you're doing. I remember doing the Bronx. I did the Bronx BBQ in, in like '96. Did you have a bomb? Oh fuck yeah! Oh yeah! It was, Bronx, it was like 1:30 in the morning at the Bronx on a Saturday night, and I was like the the first two cats got booed off. And then I was just the third guy about to get booed off. Yeah. It didn't really matter if I was good or not. Like, fuck you, pretty motherfucker. And I'm like, yeah. and I, I, at the same time, I feel like I you pretty. I, I, I felt like it was a compliment. I was like, well, thank you. Yeah. I feel quite pretty right now. That means I mean, like, how ugly are the dudes in this place? And I'm pretty. So um, it was it was, it was ill for, for for me uh, for you because um, when I was looking at your your child history, you had a Jamaican friend. You had a, oh shit, that, that's the that, one in the blue you? shirt. Oh, okay, okay. It yeah, seemed like all his friends were Jamaican. Yeah, they all are. I'm one of those guys. guys. So, so the thing about it is, I, what is that? That's in Canada, you guys? Yeah, yeah, Toronto. Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Toronto. But um, it shit reminded me of Queens so much, because I don't oh, yeah. know, like that's exactly how it's it is. It's the same shit. Queens. Yeah. Like, Queens is all West Indian. Indian. every fucking nationality. Yeah. Like, and you are building. every nationality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my building. Oh, so, so how was that growing up? Because like me, it was crazy because I'm half black, I'm half Puerto Rican. So I would always hear all the bad black jokes when I hang around my Puerto Rican friends. And then I would hear all the bad Puerto Rican jokes when I hang around my black friends. Yeah, right. And I always had like a medium. Of both, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, how about you? It's the same. See, the white kids were real bullyish when I was mm. growing up, especially in the 70s. Right. So, and in Canada, being Indian was the lowest form of human you could be. No way. Yeah, yeah. We were treated like shit. Dude, like, black. oh, yeah, yes, not below you motherfuckers, that's for sure. 
Yeah. Well, well, you, well, like, like, you don't know what it's like, though. You don't know what it's like. Because at least y'all had physical recourse. I was built like a fucking third world kid. I was, I was skinny. My knees looked like I was smuggling walnuts into the country. <laughs> and I didn't know how to fight. And I was just... I would just get spit on and kicked and punched and called names. And then the only time it never happened was when I hung around the black kids. So I was like, well, I see where the safe zone is and I'm gonna be there. And then Marlon and I have been friends since we were seven years old. I'm 49 now, so. So, and he was always strong as shit. When he came to Canada from Jamaica, I was like the first person he met. We lived in the same uh, townhouse project type thing. Oh, you're right? actually one of the niggas that came from Jamaica. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because everyone say that he from Jamaica, oh, no, no, like he's in Canada. And oh, yeah. He really from down the block. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then, <laughs> <laughs> he, he had a fucked up life because his stepdad okay. bought him a one way ticket Chevy. to Jamaica when he was 14. Oh, wow. And then he. he he had me go and find the money to get him back to Canada in 2015, and he came back extra Jamaican, wearing bell bottoms and shit. He even came, I literally went to the airport to pick him up when we were 15, and he, he showed up with a bucket with like fish in it, like live fish. I go, what the fuck? Yeah, it was 85, 86. He goes, I go, what's that? He goes, they bring back two fish. And I go, I was like, why are you talking like that? So I was there for a whole year, bitch. And then I come back, I'm like, what's going on? What happened to Mar What happened to Stacko that left? <laughs> now, now, Bernie Fox, it was a rumor that if you would have went to go see Eric B this one day, that there might have not been a rock him. I'm sure there still would have been a rock him. Been but Eric B and Freddie Fox. It could have been. That could have been that. Mm. Well, because because you didn't want to leave your well, Eric B and Bucky yeah. Knuckles. Yeah. What happened was. Um, um, the kid, there was a cat in our neighborhood, Alvin Tony, who was uh, he was cool with Eric. Mm -hmm. Eric knew him, and he and he stopped me, waved me down on the street. He said, "Yo, man, there's a cat I want to introduce you to, who's looking to do a project." And is Eric working at BLS at the time? Eric or? was working at BLS, okay. yeah. And he and, and he. Who the hell was Eric doing at BLS? He was a he was a, 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 a mobile jock, mobile disc yeah, jockey. I, 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 I didn't know this part. Yeah, yeah he was a mobile. Yeah, he was a mobile disc jockey, and he was run and he was going around doing a lot of these different projects. He wanted to put together a, a rap project, and. He came out, he, he was. He had people in Long Island he knew out in Wyoming. Something called the Tri-State or something like something that, like I believe that. it was. Like, yeah, so he came, he came out and he was looking, for, they were like, yo, who the, who's the nicest rappers out here? So the kid was like, yeah, there's two guys that you should really talk to. I, was just, I just happened to be driving by at the time and they flagged me down and he asked me, he said, yo, man, I got this project that I want to know, you know, know if, if, if you can get down and I heard you can rhyme. And I said, yeah, he was like, well, you know, you know, when can I get, when can we meet up? I said, yeah, well, I'm on, I was on my way to a rehearsal, actually, with my crew. So he was like, I said, so we'll be there. He said, nah, I just need one yeah. person. So I kind of felt fucked up. Like, I can't, right, like you know. Sound out your boys. Yeah, I can't leave my boys fucked up and then do that. So I just decided, you know, after thinking about it, not to show up because I just went to the rehearsal and I said, yeah, I, I'm not going to do that because why would I take them to the meeting? He not going to want them anyway. Right. And if I go... You know, but you ever imagine life would have happened like if you would have went by nah, yourself? I don't know. I don't know, man. I I, I kind of think Rakim is a better fit with Eric than I was, and yeah. and, and as you see, it happened. You know, me and Eric mm -hmm. ended up working together, right. but I think him and Rakim was destiny. You know what I'm saying? That's like a real hip hop answer yeah. for someone yeah. who cares yeah. about the most. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think, I, I'm, being, I'm being honest because <laughs> most people could say what they could have, would have, should have done, right. but even to this day. I just want to rap. I just want to rock the mic and make right. music. A lot of dudes get caught up in trying to fit in with everybody else's movement and what they doing, and when shit switches, they switch. I don't, right. I'm not really good at all that shit. I just want to get on the mic, go in the studio, and come out with what I want to leave here for when I'm dead and gone. I got a legacy of music that, I mean, you, I haven't even begun to tap into my catalog. And Russell's I, I harass this motherfucker yeah. all the time to yeah. release shit. Like, he just sits on... You got you got now at least have at least eleven directed. albums completed yeah. that he's sitting on. Direct like, like to consumer right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shit. So let me ask you something that we, to both of you guys. Mm -hmm. This is not a question for one of this I was like again, I was searching interviews mm -hmm. and I came across Daddy O interview, right? Mm -hmm. After uh it was something about uh, you talk about Rock Kim or something. And then Daddy O came on and Daddy O said that Rock Kim uh committed the, the worst lie in hip hop history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I I had to click on it because I'm like, what the fuck is he talking <laughs> about? Right? Mate? Do you know what he was talking about? No. He said that he felt that Rakim 
didn't want to want people to know that he was from Long Island at the time. Like Long Island was cool to certain uh, people, but it wasn't cool to everybody. So that's what he said. It ain't where you from. It's where you at. I didn't agree with that at all. But the fact is, this is Daddy O. This is uh, also another legend. He has, I don't, I guess he has a certain problem with Rod King, but it's not the first time after I looked. Yeah, no. But, but that, do you, did you agree with him at all? The, no. The, the, I, I think, <laughs> I think Daniel speaks out of pocket a lot, but more so to get attention. <laughs> Oh yeah, you think that's, he's that's all I feel like it. You think he's trolling? I feel like he's trolling. Yeah, how is that the biggest thing? You think? Hold on, let's just be clear. Because yeah. it's still Daddy O. It's, it's still the, listen. It's still Daddy O. I love yeah, Stetson yes, Sonic. Yes. Legend. But, but but nobody wants to go buy a Daddy O album. Uh, I don't. I can't, I can't say that. I got. I got to represent this. No, I, I, I would buy it, but I'm saying yeah, this in the masses. I mean, right. you would have to be like Daddy O yeah. from Stetson Sonic, unless right. you're a real hip hop nerd like us, and right. you'd be like, "Ooh, shit, Daddy O got some shit coming out." But I always feel like Daddy O okay. is a uh, is like uh, kind of borderline. See how when he says some of the stuff, it kind of because okay. you can see it in his eye when he says it. It kind of like has that look of. Mm-hmm. No, and he certain things he has points with. He he said he still credits Rock Kim for being like one of the greatest uh, things that ever happened when he took seven MCs and twisted seven. So what it, what it is is do you, the do, you think, do you think that statement? Do you think at that time? Because I mean, obviously, I was a youngin at that time, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't know. Um, I, I, I always came up Hempstead was a cool place to go that was a dope yeah, place yeah. like it was ill to claim Hempstead when I came up but was it ever like that was Long well, Island ever like looked down upon you know what I think people slept on Long Island because well first of all let me back up okay. Rock Kim's statement rough enough to break New York from Long Island was a very powerful statement mm. it, he represents Long he always represented Long Island mm. I've never not seen Rock Kim represent Long Island even with a Brooklyn crew he had mm. a Long Island crew yep. he's always had you know, Long Island on his back mm-hmm. as long as long as I've known him. Right. Um, I think I think that uh, because they felt like dudes in Long Island have front yards, backyards, and shit that they, that dudes in South Jamaica had the same thing. You know what I mean? Exactly. So and I, it, I knew that. It, 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 it's, it's not it's not a place, and it, and you know a lot of my boys. You right. know, cats from out there they rumble. Of they course, they, they of real course. cats. Yeah, it, real it's not it's not a place to be slept on. But you know, I, I guess if you look at the history of Long Island, Public Enemy, De La Soul, Rock Him. Uh, 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 Granddaddy uh, 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 IU, K Solo, EPMD, e- yeah. Granddaddy IU. There's a lot. I mean, there's yeah. a Biz Marquee. There's Damn. a bunch. There's yeah. a bunch of Long Island legends that just, just, just have been so, so such, such, so instrumental in hip hop. Right. You know what I mean? And if you think about it, I mean, I, I, Daddy O was running around in Amityville, bro. The, the, in, the interview of a guy who, when he said that, he said everything you said. He yeah. named all the rules artists. Yeah, there's, and, and there's a bunch of them. You know, uh, uh, Rap's new generation. You know, there's cats right. who there's cats who represented Long Island heavy. Rock Kim has always been at the pinnacle of that group like, of MCs. It's, 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 pardon me for like mm-hmm. changing the subject a little bit. Like, because for instance, when I came out, it was cool to be from Queens, Bread. Yeah, and I used to have to differentiate. And tell people I'm not from Queensbridge. I thought you was from Queensbridge. I'm not from Queensbridge. I, I didn't find that out until later. Yeah, that I had to left say left frack three thousand times <laughs> left in the record, City. and to say that I was proud of it because it was so much. We were overshadowed. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you got to think about it. You had uh, Capone and Noriega and Trash. All right, the common denominator is you know Trash is is, is got put on by Molly Ma. Molly Ma uh, is Queensbridge. Um, uh, from all deepest Queensbridge Even the prodigy he, he said for a lot of times That he wasn't from Queensbridge But what happened was He was just over Do you know what I'm saying okay, gotcha. I was different Because I was saying Not only I'm not from Queensbridge I'm, But I'm telling you Where I'm from But what I'm trying to say is It was so cool I could have easily Took that route Queensbridge just let it ride. Mm-hmm. I know I couldn't have came back home. You, it wouldn't have been the nice. only rapper from Left Rack, I think, right? I never well, Akineli. Akineli from Left Rack. And G Rap on the low lived in Left Rack. Well, I can't say he's from Left Rack, but yeah. he lived in Left Rack. That's right. Akineli's from Left Rack. Yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm Soul Sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soul Sisters. So, That's you know, right. I, I know everybody from Left Rack. I know motherfuckers are made it. They did made it. But what I'm trying to say is, so I somewhat. Saw where um, Daddy O was coming from to a certain extent, but again, I didn't live in that era, so I couldn't identify with it. But I, I just didn't see, I, I never see a, another legend critique rock him at all. That's you my know what? First yeah, time. but you know what it is? I think, see, with, with, with Long Island, that's Daddy O's statement would probably be more valid if it came from somebody that was from Long Island. Mm. He's from Brooklyn. Mm. So, so. 
in Long Island, Rakim is 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 revered as as the the god. That's right. the god. You know, we and in the mm-hmm. game period. But yeah. you know, I've to never, I, yeah, I've never not seen him represent Long Island. I, I disagree with that part. Right. You know what I mean? As, especially when it comes to like you know some of the lines in his records. Like he, right. he you know, he's he's always been a Long Island. Like I'm still scared every time I see Rakim. I'm like, what's up, like, what's up, God? Like, what's up, God? Like, I'm like, no, 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 no. Rakim is probably one of the most easy. I used, to, I used to go. I used to go. We used to hang out at the crib, man. Easy going, quiet, easy mm-hmm. going dude. Like you, you know, I never seen him. I never seen him write a rhyme though. Wow. I'm, I'm not saying he don't write, but it's like you know, never see him in right rhyme. Like he's mode. so mysterious. I want him to remain yeah, he's, he's, mysterious. Yeah, he's he's, he's like, good like, that way. It's crazy. You know um, what I mean? um, we had Mass Appeal, right? And uh, I was, we had a little great meeting, and I was like, "Yo, Eric B and Rock Kim is performing for the first time in 20 years. You want to go see him?" And I was like. I said, yeah, hold on. I don't know what you're asking me right now. Because if you're asking me, is it the night up to me? Let's fucking go. Yeah. And we went. When and was I, it? This was the, the first night when they came with the long, when they got back together. Oh, uh, yeah. the uh, Apollo? Uh, no, it wasn't the Apollo. This was, this was, um, so the, it might not be the first night. The Gucci long yeah, coat. Yeah. And Not me Marcus. and Nas, me and Nas went, we went there, we went backstage, said, What's up? But that wasn't the part that was amazing. The part that was amazing that's when they was performing album cuts, the cuts that was out of my league, Nas knew every fucking word. And I was just watching him. You know why? Because he was always in the studio when we was there. Mm. Like, we be in the studio, man, and just sitting around, guns everywhere, and this little uh, motherfucker be sitting in there, bro, just soaking all that shit up. Right, he nah, was always, about, yeah, wow. he, he was must always, have been a kid. Uh, yeah, he was like a kid. He was, he was all, I mean, listen, Power Play was a few blocks from yeah, that's this project. Right. That's true. So he was always around. Him, yeah, like, fact, he's was a around. Bullet balls. He can actually walk. He can actually, he's walking distance from 21st Street. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, he's walking distance. Yeah, walking distance yeah. was a few Especially blocks. Especially through starving. Yeah, yeah he's walking well, distance. That. That's yeah. a fact. Well, yeah. for him to be in those sessions makes sense to who he became. Yeah, he was young, man, and 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 I think, you know, legend has it like you know Eric was interested in working with him. With Nas. With Nas, yeah. Whatever reason wow. it didn't happen, Eric was very interested in working with him early on. Mm. You know, and then I think Rock him and him just started to get more more movement after the album came out. So. Eric and Nas are still close to this day, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very yeah. close. <clears throat> now, I just I, I also watched a Christmas special of yours. <laughs> Sorry about that. And no, I, 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 I couldn't believe you rapped it. When you, there was no curses. Or uh, was there curses? No, there was none. Yeah, I peeped that. It's I was Christmas. Like, I was like, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's fucking <laughs> <what's laughs> awesome. Then I had my 10-month-old daughter on it then. Like, uh, you're not going to curse to my daughter. Yeah, you know. reminded me of college so much. Like, you know how college got shot everywhere? Yeah. Like, I was like, yo, you know what's funny? She just had a new boy, I just right? had a boy. Let's motherfucking make some noise. Yeah. I got two daughters. Uh, okay. Let you me know, tell you the ill shit about my son. Okay, all right, cool. Okay, so no, I, I first met Nori okay. last year. Uh-huh. We went so, and had drinks at his spot in Malibu. Right. That's why right, goddamn it. Let's make some noise, right? Yeah. 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 And I've and I've been a big Nori fan since mm-hmm. CNN. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Since t- oh, top yeah. of New York yeah. and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And and when I met him, I was like, this is a cool motherfucker right here. And then I found out his name is Victor Santiago. <laughs> and I walked away from that meeting going, that is a cool fucking name. That is a fucking dope ass name. Then when I had my son two weeks ago, uh-huh. I named him Russell Santiago Peters. That's hard! I gotta be like the black um, Spanish godfather. That's right. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. He's already Spanish, so I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got this covered. Oh, you got from your, your, your same mother? No, no, different one. I, I grew up with black guys. You think I'm going to have the same mother? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's yeah, yeah. You are into that. Yeah, she, was Miss, she was Miss Honduras in yeah. Miss Universe. Wow. So, that's, 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 yeah, yeah. so that's, that's not the same, not the same one as your, your daughter? No, my ex-wife is okay. Honduran and Ecuadorian. Apparently, my jizz reacts well to Honduras. Honduras. <laughs> I got Central American it's located. It's from Honduras, Peru. Yeah, yeah, Honduras, Peru. Just yeah, Peru. Man, my He's mind, a he's Peruvian always, fat yeah. Joe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's young Joe. Right? In my mind, he's always from uh, Honduras. I don't know why. He's been telling me that he has Peru, but I don't know why. But um, so wow. Um, so look, so look, look. You know what the crazy shit is. Whenever I see like a new father, I love the way they break down like being uh, how old a father, like how you is. Like you know how you be like. You it's got just kids. Like, I, I, I just found out his shit was about working. To be I'm not gonna lie. Long. We just <laughs> found out his shit was working. For years, oh, he's been, <laughs> he been busting his shit. How old are you? <laughs> like, 
43. Okay. I'm 49. I'm, I'm all fucked up. <laughs> well, obviously, you should still work. So. And I wasn't hoping it wasn't. I thought I had a starter pistol by now. <laughs> oh, shit. Y'all fucking me up right now. Hold on. So, look, I was saying, I love hearing, like, when the father is new, because it's like you ever hear, hear somebody like from Europe that came to America one time and they try to break America down to you, they're like, because in the States, you're like, come on, buddy. Yeah, yeah. You, you was in Nebraska for two days. Yeah. Don't tell me about in the States. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, so that's how I feel like when you see a new father, like when they they got the baby and it's like, all right, cool, they're only a year old. Wait till that terrible two comes. Yeah, that's not that's easy, bro. When, that's that's when you got a daughter? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're lucky. Uh, yeah. Daughters are the best. Oh, no, I know, boys are worse. I actually yeah. Daughters are, are cool too. They hit 13, so 12, 13. Oh, and then, and then, so then they start that bullshit. Yeah. Uh, 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 and my daughter's uh, eight. Uh, so God bless. She's, she's all daddy right now, but I'm sure that's gonna shit. She's gonna shit the bed. You bought her so a $10,000 bag. Yeah. What is wrong with you? I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> what does that bed do? <laughs> she was one, though. Like, she wasn't even one. <laughs> She hasn't slept in there. Not yet. And they pissed you the fuck it's off. The, well, the good news is she understands that it costs a lot of money now. Because mm -hmm. I, when we had to make, we had, I had her. Mm -hmm. She had two bedrooms in my house, mm -hmm. and I told the baby, "You got to give up one room for your brother. Which mm -hmm. one do you want to give up?" She said, "I'll give him my pink room. Mm -hmm. It was the really girly room." Mm. I said, what about, so you're going to keep the castle bedroom? She goes, yeah. I go, do you want a new bed? She goes, no, daddy. That bed cost you a lot of money. Mm. <laughs> I was like, whew. Mm. Thank God she realized that. Wow. That's a good kid. Now, yeah. now Freddie, you yeah. ever thought hip-hop would be this, this level? What is this level, though? Um, it's, 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 it's a level where... He must um, be business-wise. I mean, business-wise. I meant, like, you know, lucrative. Like, yeah. you know, because... Because at the end of the day, a lot of people who did it before me, a lot of people who did it after me, it wasn't as lucrative for everyone. Mm -hmm. And now it seems like anybody can, you know, shout out to Best Buy Liquors, by the way, who provided the liquors. BestBuyLiquor.com. Oh, uh, yeah, BestBuyLiquor.com. Wait, Puffy don't give you this shit for free? No, 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 this is a different. No, this is a different. Shout deal. out to, to Puffy. The different deal. Deal. Okay, so relax. <laughs> this is a different deal. Is that water? No, that's the watermelon. Oh, all right, cool. Then you, that's a real shot, if that is. If that is, you're a real. So, um, then what the fuck I was saying? I was into that. Yeah, I think I think yeah, because you know what I'm saying? To, to see how, how easy it is. Like 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 you said, um, back in the days, you had to go to Power Play, Unique Studios, Chung King, and shit like that. Mm. Nowadays, a person could literally sit in their mother's living room with a computer, a mic, you know, put some reverb on their shit, throw it out, and get 50,000 viewers on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. And actually change their life. And, and one aspect, I love to see anybody from the hood yeah. get out, make it. But then on another aspect, they don't they don't learn the the tools of the game. Mm -hmm. They don't learn the battles. They don't know the the uh, 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 there's just out spitting. They, all they mm -hmm. say, say I was rhyming two months ago, and they got a record deal. Well, what does what, what, what does that feel um, like to you? I, I, listen, well, you know what? The funny thing is that the, the learning curve was different. Like I was in the studio with Patrick Adams mm. who did Push Push in the Bush. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. He, he taught me how he taught me how to use keyboards, program mm. keyboards. He didn't actually say, hey, come here and learn this. Right. When he was doing it, I was paying attention. I was asking right. questions. What's this? What's this Oberheim thing? What does that do? What's this compression do? What does mm. that do? Doc Rodriguez, Chris Conway, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of legendary engineers. Engineer, uh, Herb Powers. Yeah. I used yeah. to go to Master on Herb Powers. I would pay the extra money to sit in there to, to watch him master my album so that I could learn wow. the difference. You know, I'm not really feeling the whole how-to book shit that's out now. Oh, how oh. to rap, this how you hold a mic, this oh, how you write a shit like that? No, that's yeah. not hip-hop. Yeah, yeah, that's to me, that's bullshit. Yeah. There's a lot of how-to, and I think that is damaging to the fan base because mm. those same cats that you see in the audience that used to be the ones, like, excited to see no more stage. fans. Everybody's looking. They want to be with. They want to yeah. be on stage. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be on stage, mm -hmm. but the the, the 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 celebration of mediocrity is a problem to me. Yeah, I think no that more fans. you know, it's it's almost like we can sit around here and crack jokes all day, but if somebody step on that stage with a mic and it's just you and the audience, it's right. a whole nother ball game. It's the right. same in the comedy game as it is in the hip hop game. Like you got like mm -hmm. these these kids that were like good on Vine. 
I had one kid one night, I was hosting at the improv. I like to host because I can get up and freestyle and fuck around. I heard you say that. I thought you were just saying that on camera. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I do like to do that. It's like this. So I was hosting. Uh, and, remember Marlon uh, Wayne said that too. Marlon yeah, Wayne said he uh, yeah. just like to go and he'll do yeah, it for free. It's just fun to yeah. fuck around. So okay. I was hosting this one night and there was this kid I never knew. I said, hey man, what do you want me to say about you? He goes, uh, you can tell him I have about, I have 500,000 followers on Vine. I go, no seriously, what do you want me to say about you? He goes, that's a big deal, man. I go, okay, buddy. Right? And I'm like, yeah. So, so I introduce this guy. Goes, uh, and he's an open. He's a comedian. He's, he's on. He's just on. He's doing seven minutes or oh, something. Okay. I, just, so I put him on. He eats a fat dick on stage. <laughs> Meaning bomb. Yeah, he bombs. Okay. okay. I come back I home. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I hope that wasn't good. I hope that's not a positive. Way. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> of course, it's great. I, uh, so he comes off. I go back on. And I go, give it up for whatever his name I said whatever his name is. Give it up for him. Apparently he's good for seven seconds at a time. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, the vibe. You buy him. <laughs> but, like, these kids don't get it. Like, yeah, because a lot of people <laughs> like your shit online doesn't mean it translates to right. you being live. Right. Yeah. You need to still be right. able to get in the trenches. Right. It's like being good at uh, fucking Mike Tyson punch out, and then you think, you know what? I think I'm ready for a fight. You, think you, can fight Tyson? Tyson? you get into a ring with somebody, you're like, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you thumbing them to death. Yeah. I, I, think, I think, honestly, one of the illest things, I, illest quotes I ever heard was Karis when he said, rap is something you do, hip-hop is something you live. It's the mm-hmm. truth. And I think that goes with hip-hop. I think that could even be in the comedy world. Like, it's a culture mm-hmm. that you got to experience it, you got to live through it to, to, to embody it. It's my 30th it. year. But I, put, I, put, I personally put myself through a grueling training thing. Like I would never do records with anybody that I didn't think was better than me. Mm. And I'm still that way now. I'm real, mm. really like I want I want MCs that are like make me say, oh shit, I really gotta write this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like KRS One, Tretch, G right. Rap, right. you know yourself, guys right. that I've done songs with. Right. You know even 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 to this day, man, I'm I'm, I'm very particular about who I put my voice because I mean you know like I'm always thinking about when it's over. Right. Like for me, as a, as an like age, legacy, as, as you're a thinking human of legacy. Being, I'm thinking about when people go back years, 30, 40, 50 right. years now, and say, "Yo, I found this record with this guy named Bumpy Knuckles on it, and him, Coogee Rap, and Little Fame, or MOP, or whoever right. I did songs with." They going back bar to bar. Like, KRS-One is pressure. When you rock with him, it's pressure. Yeah. If you go on stage with him, it's pressure. Yeah, he can, yeah, at yeah. any given moment, yeah, 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 yeah. just pass lie. you. He can just, any given yeah. moment, just start rocking off the top yeah. and just say, so Freddie Fox, <laughs> you wanna get ill, and then you gotta get up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, you right in the loop, and then you gotta be ready for that shit. Yo, you one time I had a show with Carol Song, the guy I told you this. This was like in the NRE days, and they had me going last, and I was like, this ain't right. Like, I was just like, yo, this ain't right. And luckily, he showed up late, so I had, to, I had to go first, and he came on, he rocked for two hours. I looked at the promoter, I said, what the fuck was I supposed to do after that? Yeah. What was I supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. Jerk off? That's the only thing. 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 He just had a show in Miami, like two, what, two days? Yeah. And then he, I don't know if you ever see this, but he does it. He stops it at some point. He just has a speech. He just talks to them. He's talking about absolutely nothing. But it's the most amazing shit in the world. I'm sitting there like this. I'm like in a cult. He would tell me, drink some Kool-Aid and let's die. I'm going to say, let's go, Chris. Like, that's how crazy it is. He's conversation. Because he, 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 he pops up. He, doesn't, he comes into your city and he pops up. Right. He, he he shows he doesn't hang out in the dressing room prior. Right. He shows up when it's time to get out the car, go to the stage. He has his he has his whole fleet with him, and it's, I mean I've done some things with him, and, and and it's always been. And what I was trying to say is that that kind of pressure to me, it was a training it was a training thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. when you when you when you boxing or you know you, you know boxing because mm-hmm. your dad was a fighter, yep. and yep. you know when when you when you go into the fight game, you you don't want to work out with guys that just teach you. How it's to like get fighting through. bums. Yeah, yeah you, you want to fight, learn people, better better fight people better yeah, yeah. so you can get Play better. Play ball with people better. Yeah, like that's what I always looked at it uh, as that, you know? Nah, that's real shit. That's real shit. So let me ask you, have you ever been like, um, like accused of Indian privilege? <laughs> Does that exist? <laughs> what the fuck is Indian privilege? <laughs> like, you I mean, just, I, I mean like I'm above getting malaria? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, the Slumdog Millionaire? Like, no, no, like, like, like I get better service than 7 What do you mean? I have, to, I have to like, you know, look, I gotta do my research and sometimes Does people that say, exist? people say, like, like most of your audience is the Indian audience, so they come out 
and they support you, and then and is that your fault though? Like, I'm asking. Well, they're not. You like, have my show. I had to look at your haters the same way I looked at your positive people. Right, right. So I had to, and that was something that they accused you of. That I get Indian privilege. Like yeah, it's like you have Indian privilege. I had never. I, heard I don't of even know what that is. I never heard yeah. about yeah. it. But what was the privilege? Um, being what is white privilege? Let's, let's say white privilege, privilege is, is that, is that, is that thing that you can pulled over, you're not going to get shot. Well, there's that, and then you right. don't even know that you have white privilege, and I see it all the time because mm. you see the way they act. The league, right? they, they act uh, like just More real. Shots. They just they're just very comfortable. You on the job and you eat wherever they are, shit, well, because they know you can't do that. Really get home and eat and put it on the job. What did you eat? Whatever. But yeah, so you've never heard of that? Like no, because in Canada, the the poor communities are black and Indian. I, Where in America, I mean, the poor communities this. are black and Hispanic. And reggaeton, yeah. and reggaeton, there's a lot of artists who sometimes they'll sell like 30,000 units on 30,000 seats. But when the album comes out, they won't sell shit. Wow. It's because they feel like Latino people come out to see you more than they actually support you. Yeah. yeah. So have you ever been accused of something like that? No, because my audience is real diverse. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the beginning, when I like when I first started getting popular, Mm -hmm. it was it was heavy Indian and 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 Chinese Asian type thing. Yeah, yeah, you got the Chinese accent down pat. Right, and then over time, now it's been spreading. So, and and Bumpy actually just DJed one of my shows for me recently, Uh, and uh, he saw the audience is completely mixed now. Yeah, you got white, you got you got everything. Yeah, I mean, if there's white people there, it's usually because they have an Indian friend. Right. Or they're fucking an yeah. Indian person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or they fucking Indian. But the Latinos come out because right. they're like, well, he kind of looks like us. Uh, <laughs> we we can relate to that <laughs> whole mentality. <laughs> and the black people will come out usually if it's like immigrant black people. You know what I mean? Like Haitian, yeah. Jamaican, West Indian, <laughs> African. <laughs> yeah, Trini. <laughs> And when I get like black Americans come out, I'm more excited than anything because I'm like that to me is like that to me is crossing over. White yeah. Americans don't mean nothing to me. I mean, I'm happy that they're there, but when black Americans show, it means like, oh shit, they get this. But how did this you start good. to identify your audience? Like for, for us, like you know, hip hop, we had to literally go and um, hey, give Ian Finn a shot too. Ian, no, just give me the shot glass yeah, and yeah, I'll yeah, pour yeah. my shot. Because um, like we had to literally go out. Like how did you start? To identify that, and then you, now you can use social media to help you identify. Well, back identify. in the day, I was just you were a comic, so you just wow. go wherever the comedy spots were. And because I wasn't a white comic, when I would go to New York, I couldn't get on in the white clubs. Mm-hmm. I could only get on in the black rooms. Mm-hmm. So I would go do the Bronx BBQ. I would go do Nagasaki's in Long Island. Sounds tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and depending on, or I would do something in Ozone Park. So mm-hmm. depending on what part of the city I was in, I would either kill or fucking bomb. Wow. So the Bronx, I would eat it. Right. I would go to Nagasaki's. I would kill. I would go to uh, Queens. I would right. kill. Right. But it depends on what the demographic of that area was. Mm. But now when I go to New York, New York feels like home to me. So right. doesn't matter where I go. I feel I feel great wherever I'm at. Over. Right. Cause like Toronto is like a calm down New York. Well, like, it's trying to it's trying to act up lately. Yeah, I ain't gonna fight. Y'all shooting people now. They're shooting a lot of people. Now. I have been damned. I'm like, nigga, I thought I'd be coming out here safe. Y'all think this is shooting me? No, they're just shooting each other. It's not even like they're shooting like it just. It's like these little corny beefs. You're like, what are you doing? Like, uh, learn how to fight. Stupid. I was out there with Quan had a barber shop. Niggas just pulled up. I was like, man, shit, I went down off the, off the block. I was like, what? That the just fuck? opened, didn't it? Like, yo, I don't even remember. Ray I was Quan like, shop? I was out there. I'm like, nigga, coming up. And they talking to each other. I'm like. I thought Toronto is the sixth same borough. Don't think it's out there. Toronto. Wow. Yeah, man. Like, oh my God. So I know, man. We, we celebrate we our career now, baby. This is the watermelon survival. Yeah, it's you know what I'm saying? Mmm. That shit is dangerous because that shit's starting to taste like Kool Aid to me. It's good. And that's good. Aye, 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 I grew up on that. Y'all so, want some of this? Yeah. Stack, man. Stack, you want to try this? Come on, man. Y- y'all on vacation. Get a, get a yeah, glass. Yeah, y'all on vacation, goddammit. That's why I told you we should have, get our plastic cups, Mr. Lee. We out here. The fancy plastic cups. Are. So, what is your favorite part? Or rather, what is your favorite era in hip-hop? 90s era, of course. Nah, all right, now, nah, I'll give you 10 years, though. I'm, so, I'm going to say from 93 really? to 98. Oh, you went. You would have said late yeah. 80s. I thought because for me it's late 80s, mid 90s. Nah, 90. Yeah. To me, my favorite era was from 93 to 98. Mm. You wow. know, I would go. You get 10 though. You only take it. That's only take us. Because I started. To, I started to wave off. Because I started to get more. Because in that era, I was really active in 
and, and, and underground and like mm. like and right before like 88, 89, 90, I was just kind of just finding my way. You know what I mean? Mm. I was just finding my way and I was kind of, you know, doing a bunch of shit that were like going to clubs, popping up. Dudes used to, I used to sit in, I used to have, I used to go to a club. I would have like a backpack on me, whatever was in it was in it. And I would go in there and I would, I would, I would watch rappers rap, man. And I would jump on stage and say, y'all like that whack motherfucker? That nigga was whack. Throw that same beat back on yeah. and shit. And then I would yeah. rock their shit. Rock. Yeah. So then, <laughs> then I had, then, like, you know, there was times when I was just jumping on stage. Me, G-Rap, Scarface. Wow. I would just, Ooh. I would just, you know, just jump on stage. Just, yeah, just, yeah, you can't just make some I was those are the kind of guys I was I was kind of trying to like G Rap to me when I he was the first person to put me on G Rap's fucking dumb. G Rap, yeah, you man. know, when, when G Rap put me on Money in the Bank, that was my first collaboration. Right. You know what I'm saying? Large Professor produced it, Eric B's brother Holy Ant Live, God. rest in peace to Ant Live. Side side note, that joint that Nori did with Large Professor about four years ago, five oh, yeah, years ago. Yeah, that was it. That That's shit was fucking yeah, dope. Large Pro, yeah, Large Pro has always been to me somebody I always wanted to work with him. You know what I mean? Yeah, but big shout out to Billy Paul. Very famous, like 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 producers like that, like Large Pro guys like that. You know, Primos, the Pete Rocks. Pete I always had yeah, a genius. He could get it like, yeah, from anywhere. A lot of these guys the are scientists with their production. Yeah. It's like it was an era of that. Yeah, that that yeah. kind of stuff was was really bubbling underground, and it's like the yeah. I still to me to this day even to me. Is there underground right now? I call it more of a chitlin circuit. I don't know if it's underground. Uh, yeah. Uh, because there's, to me, underground. I, I can see the, the analogy. Underground, yeah. underground was like when you when you was in the club, it was a vibe. It was an energy, man. The Red Parrot. You remember Red but, Parrot? But I, I feel like this is like dudes like Schoolboy Q who might have an underground. Yeah, but no, no. But nah. I think what he's saying, the, the type of underground, it just can't even exist like right now. Like Curry? It's different. Yeah, but it's just a different okay. time. Like, okay. just a digital it's era. It's just, you know, it just, it's a just different imagine, thing. Just imagine, this was underground. Busta Rhymes and, and Dinko, D- Dinko, Dinko and all them cats. Red Man. Coming, oh, Red Man. Yeah, that was underground. underground they, was, you know? they was coming. Yeah. Of, and and wow. to see a lot of those guys now. Mainstream. Though. Mainstream yeah. and, and really bubbling and getting in and doing it is a great thing for me. I love to see that because a lot of them guys... They 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 been they would they were after I was before them but I watched the growth you know what I mean and I watched it and I watched you know I see Buster Buster been tearing clubs down for years and always had energy yeah. always had this. Why same, ain't performing after that motherfucker neither? Yeah, he's yeah, another. Yeah, Buster, yeah, Buster, Buster, yeah. We on Mark Bell? I'm like nah, yeah. hey, I'm going first. I toured with him. He's definitely well, he well, definitely well, a closer. That's my yeah. friend. That's yeah. my friend. And I mean, he, he was on the road with us in smoking grooves. He had three buses. Uh, he had a bus for all his clothes. He had a bus a bus. <laughs> bus bus. He had, he had a bus. He had, he had a bus for his clothes. He had a bus for his cooks, and then he had a bus for his crew. So he had he had he had Jamaican chefs on the road, man. Wow. They, you know, so he, he he's he's come from he's come a long way, and that to me that that travel that that whole journey from underground to the. To the pinnacle Creates of what the they, yeah, yeah. That, that, That's when you get a chance to see that. 93 to 98. 93, that was my. That was kind right, of. Let me flip the question on you because I'm going to give him the same question. Mm-hmm. What is the best era in comedy to you? To me? Are you a comedy fan? I love comedy fan. I, I, I loved. Um, I loved. Uh, the, the Eddie Murphy era was I big for me. That. You know what I'm saying? Like Robin Harris, the Robin Harris era Robin was Harris, fly. Uh, uh, George Fox. George Carlin was somebody who I thought Yo, was... Yo, we got to talk about George Carlin. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite, too. Yeah. George Carlin. And, and he got... Richard Pryor. Richard 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 I grew up on Richard Pryor. I don't know about George Carlin, but for you, I can see the white guy. The white guy. Yo, he's the white guy. He was talking about politics. He was the first film ball. There you go. No, he talked about everything. He talked literally... He did illest. every subject before anybody did every yeah, subject. Yeah, he's the illest. Okay, he's a we'll do one more shot, Mr. Lee, before we cross over to Tiger Ball. Whoa. So, just, just, I would like you... So, that, that era? Yeah, that, 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 those... The, like, I grew up on Richard Pryor. We used to... Mm-hmm. My, my friend, a friend of mine, his father had all these Richard Pryor albums in his mm-hmm. basement, man. We used to sneak and listen to them shits, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, and that kind of stuff. Even the Jerky Boys. I love the Jerky Boys. I love the Jerky Boys. Jerky boys. We used, you know, they started us making prank phone calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So that was yeah, the 90s. That was yeah, the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I was a big fan of early comedy. I, I mean, comic any comedy anyway is dope, you know what I mean? Right. I, like, But I like to see stand-up stand-up. No, I don't know if I'm big. We got the largest. What is it? The largest or the biggest? There's some cats that don't in the world. Is that is that how the yeah. intro go? Yeah. Yeah, give me some more. I ain't disrespectful. Yeah. He's disrespectful. Yeah. I've spilt more than that. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, let's turn up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a little poquito. 
Uh, yeah. And so stand up is your no, 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 shit. No, yeah, I like to see I like to see stand up comedians that you know. And you don't gotta do this one if you want. You can skip one. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 being a drinker. No, I know that. Nah, I know that. We try to get you through the whole interview yeah, too. Don't worry. Yeah, nah, I ain't gonna fall out of no shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm so okay, stand up, so stand up. What year? Are you saying the Eddie Murphy era? Yeah, Eddie Murphy, Robin Harris. I like that. that Look, year. I would say like eighty two to 80, 89 was a great All fucking right, time. When you say that, you gotta describe what is happening. You would go from delirious, delirious. Just, 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 just Eddie and Leather Eddie and Leather Eddie delirious and Leather. Leather. to 89 it was like and when I say comedy so I mean there's like, no Martin Lawrence at all uh, well here's the thing He's comedy in, 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 in the comedy world uh. the 80s was considered the boom like the classic era that was, no that was just when comedy went fucking huge and 89 is when it ended that's when, ended. That's, when that's when uh, Andrew Dice Clay came out and he sold out the garden and all that shit yeah. and then he was like the end of the he bookended it and he started it Dice bookended it and then in the 90s it was dead and I started in 89 so mm. when I started I would hear all the older comics so I was 19 Mm. It was the end of an era? Yeah, the older comics were like, yeah, you don't even know what it was like, kid. We should get on <laughs> private jets and do blow up hookers' asses. And I'm like, I don't like know. Sam Kinison shit? Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, I don't know, dog. I'm just, I'm just trying to get 25 bucks to fucking get through the night, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm making your stuff now. Salud. This is uh, water bottle? To your huevos con leche. <laughs> yeah, it's watermelon, guys. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, no, your audience. <laughs> no, but how, how 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 easy is it to identify your audience now? Because I I remember back in the days, like well, um, Ross, like I physically used to have to bring a record to London mm -hmm. for London to have it. Like I physically had to go mm -hmm. to Japan. I don't know. I don't know that. I mean, I was in London in the mid nineties. I was there from ninety five to two thousand and two. All right. And your shit was always banging no, up there. No, but what I'm saying is, at first, I had to bring it mm. to them, like, like they... Like Violator wasn't sending his shit? <coughs> no, for you to break in another oh. country, you had to actually spend a little time there. Right. You had to do a marketing <coughs> run. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You had to go see Tim Westwood. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A month early. down, Sonori. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the new album, man. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, word up, word up. <laughs> How different is it? Is it um, because we can just press a button right now? Yeah, mm -hmm. album is over there. Yeah, your album is, is it's everywhere. Is, is you look at it as a plus or, or as a minus? I mean, it's a plus that you can get the records over there now. But the, but the, I'm gonna tell you what the, the downfall to Europe is that. They don't. They don't really have the solid promoters like they used to have. They, mm. they the promotion game is different now. You get a bunch of DJs that get a few dollars. They bring you over there in the luggage compartment. And you sleep in their basement. They let you hump their sister. And you rock the mic. <laughs> send you back home. You know what I'm and, they, and there's guys over there doing that hamburger and, and, and cheese shit. You know what I mean? Mm. Now that's the chitlin circuit shit right. I'm talking about. Right. When you when you stand on your principles and you say, you know, some people say, yo, you got to take all the money. Don't leave no money on the table. Right. You become worth that. Shit that they giving you, and it's mm. like, and it's not just Europe. It's it's, mm. it's, it's everybody. It's a, and then mm. now, back in the days, we used to go over there. I mean, I mean, we was over there with Gangstar with a tour bus. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like we was touring that motherfucker, going right. from one country across right. Europe, like right. one country, boom, 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 and right. going across across the fucking globe. Right. And it was it was interesting to, to be able to just make so much money. People say, "Yo, man, I got a record. I want you to come to my studio. You making cash? You know, right. hand over fist, just boom, you know, like that." But now it's a different ball game, you know. And then how about you? Because um, right now you could do an act, and someone can film your whole shit. We got, I got. That's why Pick travels with me when I do right. shows right. to make sure nobody's in the audience with their camera. Right. We true. laser them. We're like, "Yo, mm -hmm. you see that laser on you? Turn that shit with with any text camera." And deletes all the shit they got. They wow. probably already uploaded it somewhere, but at least we do what we can. Right. And you know, you know, knock on wood. So far, so good. I went to a, um, a 
Chris Rock showed And he put the green bags, right? The green bags. Yeah. That, I felt like that was a great idea because the very yeah, next Chris does day, that, Dave does that, but I don't what, do what that. Is it? What is, what's the green uh, so, bag? So the, what it is is that you, you can have, I think you can have your shit, but they put it in a green bag where you can't open it. And then at the end, you can walk back out and they give you the key mm. and, and it opens you oh, wow. up. So they're not physically taking your phone. You, can actually, oh, you actually have your phone. I know it's kind of fucking fucked up because you, every five minutes you're like, oh shit. You're like, you, you can't yeah, open the bag. But when, when I was sitting there and I was like, you know what? At first I felt uncomfortable because I'm sitting here next to fucking Jay-Z. Jay-Z is the guy who invites me mm-hmm. to the shit. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, cool. But he did the same shit. So I was like, all right. And then when I thought about it, the very next day I had a hosting gig or something. And everybody in front of my hosting gig was like this. Yeah. yeah. And I felt so uncomfortable. I was like, yo, do you, do you motherfuckers enjoying me? Or you just want to see me later? They like, watch later. Like, yeah, see that's me exactly now. Put the fucking phone down. They even see you later. Like, put the fucking phone down. Like, it's like, definitely like, annoying. It's definitely annoying. That shit is annoying to me. Like, I had to do that in Chicago. And what you know what it it Chicago, robs. when we was just in Chicago, I said, yo, listen. I rock this shit. I ain't say nothing the whole. It was like halfway through the show. I said I ain't say nothing. But for the rest of the show, can y'all just enjoy what the fuck I'm doing? Like I'm here, and y'all like this. You're not even looking at me. Yeah, you know? but so, it robs them of the experience. Like that's why somebody right. from the '80s can explain hip hop different yeah. than somebody from uh, right now. Because mm-hmm. when you really seeing something and you watching, when you when I watched the Cold Crush Four rock, mm-hmm. when I used to watch the Furious Five. What about when you got to open for them? Yeah, that, wow. was, that was yeah. Yeah, supreme force. Yeah, that was that was uh, that was in Amityville at the Ace Center, wow. and and Grandmaster Cass said, "Who's that group right there? Oh, they supposed to open for you? Those motherfuckers can't stand on my stage. Oh, we wasn't. They have to earn that. So we had we had to stand in behind the DJ booth." And rock because the, the way the DJ was set up, we couldn't stand in front because they had a barricade. What? So we had to rock on the floor. So while everybody else was angry about that shit, I was like, fuck it. That's where I learned to get my bark on because I right. said, if they can't see me, they're going to hear yeah, me. Right. Right. So I went loud on them, you know what right. I mean? And then that's when the bumpy started creeping out of me and the shit. Right. You know, I was getting my bark on. But right. I always looked at those lessons, some lessons you can't be intentionally taught. Right. You have to grab for it. You have to say, you know what, man? I'm going I'm to I'm take this lemon and make lemonade. And, and right. when I would watch those guys perform, I was studying. The first time I seen Dougie Fresh Rock live, man, oh, yeah. I was I was baffled. I was like, what the fuck is that? I like, seen Dougie Fresh perform one record for an album. Yo. Yeah. And no one can blink. No, no, I no, swear to no, God. Like, I was, now, who can, now, now, you think you could explain that my through skill. watching him through a cell phone, bro? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, exactly. You had, you had to actually see that shit. You remember? I remember he's flawless. I was a little kid, man, going to these Mike and Dave shows. And Mike and Dave uh, were, were like the legendary promoters, DJs back in the days that threw these jams. Bismarck will tell you about them. All these guys will tell you about them. Theodore, all of them. And they was doing Stony Brook College and all these places. Right. And you, they was putting stages up. Right. Cold Crush was pulling into these places and limousines. They pulled a limousine into the gymnasium through a garage door and shit and get out with all this Rick James on? looking oh, shit on. And they jump on stage and they were do these routines and everybody was just blown I nobody had seen nothing like that before you know what I'm saying but now I think the character is different you know the right. character of the artist is different I think right. if sometimes I listen to songs and I believe feel like everybody got the same writer you know yeah say, well, I was about to ask you that because what do you think about people critiquing Drake for having a ghostwriter, but people also praise Bismarcky for the same exact thing can I step in for a second please do <laughs> yeah Drake got on by being a ghostwriter yeah, I heard you talking about this. Before. Yeah, Drake was Lil Wayne's ghostwriter. That's why Wayne signed him and got him on. I definitely don't believe that. But yeah, it, I'm telling you that's... I, I, I always look at the other way As I say in my act, right. it's a I fact. I always heard it. Excuse me. I always heard it the other way around. I always heard that it was Wayne doing that. Okay, no. Continue. Why would Wayne write for Drake when Drake was just little Jimmy from fucking the wheelchair Jimmy guy? I, I don't know. Where <laughs> but I've here's what I'm saying. So Wayne Drake... Worked. Drake got on. He wrote a couple of verses for for Wayne. Wayne okay. liked him. Wayne signed him to Young Money, and then that's how Drake got on. I'm not saying Drake consistently wrote for Wayne, but right. that's how Drake got his shine at first. And then Drake took the power and ran with it. Mm-hmm. Now Drake spits hit after hit after hit after hit. Right. Drake's the only one from this generation who's still going to be around in 20 years. And kids yeah. are going to go see. Mm-hmm. Definitely talented. Well, either you sure. like him or hate him. It's mm-hmm. it, it, it's 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 a, it's a fact that I he's agree. going to be there. I agree. And I don't like this era of music at all. But Drake is the one kid, not because I'm from Toronto, right. but Drake is the one kid. When I hear him, I go, A, I recognize his voice. 
B, he's saying some shit other than the usual five words repeated. Right. He says he spits like an MC, but he spits it to this era's tune. Mm-hmm. So I respect the kid a lot. Mm. And and if he has a ghostwriter, fuck, he needs one right now. Right. It's like he, he's, he's got so much shit happening, but, but, but he can't I'm take that time off. I, I, what you're saying is great. It's, it's, it's facts, too, as, as well. No one's denying anything you're saying. But what I'm saying is the actual act, he was critiqued. In, in a very wrong manner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they went at, yeah. They just wanted to go when at him. You, but you got people like Easy E who said Ice Cube writes the rhymes that yeah. I but say. But Easy E never really was an MC. Yeah, right. but it doesn't matter. He, he was a guy. Yeah, we got on the mic. We didn't yeah. know at that time. No, he did. He we did, didn't but, know at that time. But he, he was a hustler. He didn't say I'm not a real MC. Right. He, he didn't say I'm not a real MC until after you know the Ice Cube shit. I mean, I think anybody really paying attention could have known. Well, he I don't think it was too early on. Just like when Dre was too. rhyming, he wasn't right, and we all knew that too. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I, know that I remember when, when I first so heard the beat for Ice Cube, that's when I, mean, I knew. I, I was, and Ice Cube exposed it. I, I, I didn't know. Saying. I didn't know. I thought, I thought as, that was. As a fan, when yeah. I first heard NWA, Ren was the guy that I was like, yo, that was Cube was my favorite dope. MC out of NWA. No, Cube, when he went solo, I was like, yo, what is this? That's one of the best albums ever. But Ren, his voice was always. Biz Lock is one of my favorite. I love Biz. And... Who well, writes for Biz? Uh, Big Kane used to write for Biz, right? Well, well, you know, well yeah. damn near everything. Yeah. But you know what? And you know what it didn't take away from but me. Kane wrote for everybody in the Juice Crew. Right. Yep. And not G-Rap. G-Rap. I, I, no, not G-Rap, right. but yeah, like right. Shantae and all that. I don't think Craig G, neither. Yeah, Craig G's another True. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, see, the thing is, when you when you got yeah, MCs, too, you know, I mean, how many too, people yeah. you know? So how many people you know write their own movies, write this, their own right. books? Right. You know what I mean? It, right. you, know, you got this is your story. This is what you're telling. This is right. just that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I don't I don't think like I got a line on collection where I say I don't got time to hate on Drake. I'm right. trying to make my own motherfucking cake. Right. And I think right. a lot of times people mm. get too caught up in watching another man's pockets, right. looking at another man's relationships. Right. Right. We become so fucking. Like fucking bitches well, Always yeah. in the middle Of somebody else's <laughs> shit You know what I'm saying yeah, You start judging that. Your failures yeah. By their successes yeah, 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 and, yeah. and then when you fail You blame them And when you yeah. win You take credit for it It's like right. That that yeah. man dude If that man got a ghost right, It's his motherfucking right. business right. If Drake walked into Anybody If you walked over Any of these rappers Right now And say Yo nigga on Twitter Say fuck Drake That nigga don't write His rhymes And Drake Yo man you want, I, I, I want to sign you I like you His oh, yeah. whole shit He loved yeah, Drake yeah, 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 yeah. Switch yeah. Just like that Can't tell me a walk right. Here's the other thing. Now, is it like having comedy though? Like, no, do no, you guys get frowned upon? Like, I, for once, for once, for, for once, I seen Kevin Hart say some shit, and then I seen a bunch of comedians like, oh man, you don't write your shit right, and it almost felt breakish. Here, here's the thing for Kevin. Okay. Kevin is the hardest working motherfucker in this game. But I will never outwork him. No comic right. in this game will outwork. Kevin Hart ever. Okay. So if Kevin does even in fact have a ghostwriter or two or three or four, which I, I cannot say he does it. or not. I think he admitted to it. I think he. he, he but I think what cool. he had. I don't. Here's the thing. I mean, people say ghostwriter. Right. People think this person writes every word coming out your mouth. Right. What they do is give you. Uh, an idea and then yeah. you it's take like it from there. having a co-producer. It's basically what it is. Like right. if, if Kevin does have somebody doing that, it's somebody going, hey Kev, have you thought about uh, maybe blah, blah, blah? Yeah. And yeah. Kevin goes, oh shit! And then he spits it. Okay. And that's how it is. Right. It's somebody, it's, all it is is people to inspire you. It, and and, you, and you, Kevin's so fuck. No, no, never. never. I got one guy named Ruben Paul who Who's that? He'll be out here in Miami Improv with me all weekend if y'all want to come through. I, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, from tomorrow till Monday. Um, but Ruben is the only guy I trust in this game who can watch my set because I spit. Oh, is the Spanish guy with the long hair? No, nah, no, nah, he's um, Haitian. Okay. With, uh, with, oh, okay. Uh, I saw him. Um, he talked about his mother, how rough his mother. And he talked about how his mother put his mother rice on the pizza. No, he, said his, <laughs> he said his mother goes to any hood and be like, this is nice. It comes with food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? He's going to fucking bug so out. He's Haitian. That's my Haitian friend. Huh? Oh, oh, my food too got <laughs> Everybody gotta have at least one Haitian friend. You gotta oh, yeah. have at least one well, Haitian friend. Well, in Miami, friend. we have a lot of Haitian friends. Oh, yeah. If you're in Miami, you gotta have 17. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in Miami or yeah. New York, Brooklyn, you got Brooklyn, you've got a whole yeah. bunch of Haitian friends. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, yeah, he said let his mom, yeah, yeah. So yeah. He, yeah, he, he's he, gonna, first of all, you're gonna fucking cry when I tell him Nori knows your act. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. I, yeah. I actually see y'all chemistry. I see y'all in the back of the car. I see y'all chemistry. So, 
So he can watch me and organize my shit because I'm mad scrambled when so I'm you on stage. Cut it. I heard he'll know, he'll be like, that. yeah, you, 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 you see that bit? Put yeah. that over like there. Put it. this over there. Yeah. Good. And, and and my sets flow seamlessly when he does it. So let me ask you something. When you film a special, because you got like fucking 15,000. I'm shooting a new one. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Shooting a new one in June lie. in India. I, in India? In the motherland. I'm thinking oh, about going. Yeah, hey, you want drink chips I'm, open I'm up for you? I'm thinking about going. Let's do it. Let's do it. I've never been there. I'm thinking about going. No, come on out there. No, let's do it. So you got 15 million uh, specials, right? So what I'm saying is, how do, when, when you film a special, you film it in different places and you're taking the best parts of no, I just shoot it over. One. One, I either shoot it over one night or okay. two nights, but I, uh, very rarely do I splice them together right. to make one show. Okay, I did that once, I think, on my green card tour. Um, I spliced two nights into one night. Yeah. And that's why if you watch it, you'll see I'm talking to the audience and the audience looks different at two different times. <laughs> like, Wait a minute, where's that black guy that I saw a minute ago? He's gone. But I try to do it in one take just because I like the seamlessness of it all. I like it to be real. And I'll call myself out if I, I'll tell people, yo, that's two nights. I, I did that joke better the second night, so I took that one, you know what I mean? But I try not to do it like that. Why is it a downfall to doing nah, that? Nah, it's just as a personal thing. It's a personal thing for me. Because I remember, like, I forget who, uh, they did a tour, and you can tell. I don't think it was Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris did it over, but he it, it, he intentionally did that. It's right. like over three cities or three countries. Yeah, that's what it was. And yeah. it was like the same act in three different cities. Right. But I, I don't think it flowed the same way he hoped it would. Yeah, because, because you would have need to fuck it up right now while filming. No, no, it's just a thing you would have needed to know what the act was in one city mm. in order to watch it happen over three. It's kind of like somebody mm. performing a song that you know, mm. and then you know you see it happening in three different parts. You could piece it together and it makes sense to you. But mm. with comedy, you don't know uh, that it's it's going to go like that. Well, I'm just starting promoting right now. Let the people know that September six, I'm trying to do the quadruple play, which means. We're doing a podcast in New York in the daytime. Then we're doing a show, maybe Capone and Noriega, maybe just Noriega. No, no, do Capone and then, Noriega. And then we're flying to L.A. We're doing a podcast and a show there. Hey, I want to be the first. I want to be there. I want to be the first Deion Sanders type wow. to do this. Uh, so we're announcing this right here. <laughs> and I'm, inspired. I'm inspired because I really looked at it today when... When, first off, when they said, yo, first off, you're, you're probably the coolest co comedian right now. Because you brought fucking Bumpy Knuckles, Freddie fucking Fox. <laughs> 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 We've had Mike Epps on here. We've had Marlon Wayne's on here. We've had... No comedian brought it. No comedian brought it. Like, this, this is just... So you just got. Well, that's because those guys can stand on their own. I needed somebody to give me a. <laughs> no, 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 I needed no. to bring the Gucci. No, no, no. You want everybody? You want the there. facts is that comedians have been one of our favorite episodes. Right. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Episodes I watched the Jazzy Jeff one. Yeah. That was dope. Uh, and so you know, you know, you know, one of the things that I admire about you is you. You're always a comedian, and that's that's what was was great to me. Like one thing is that struck me about Marlon Wayans was I cracked a joke on Marlon Wayans, which was bad, which was bad on my behalf. Like right. I seen him, he had on spandex. I was like, come on, brother. Yeah. And he was like, what? <laughs> and I seen him literally <laughs> scrambling 15 million jokes in his mind. He was like, what? He's like, and I remember I had like, this was like, I had like every chain I owned. The same chain that we did the show? No, this uh, is how we got, we got the show uh, hooked up. It's cause I had like every chain on in my mind. And he, he just, he, you can tell he made every joke about the 50 million chains I had on in the big one. And I was just like, before he even said something, I was like, yo, yo, my back. <laughs> I said, I really seen a comedian work. And it was the same thing, like when we connected, yeah. it was like, we were sitting down, we were talking regular, but it was just like, it's so much in you, and like when you look at your act, like you can't help it. Like you can't help with your improv. You always, no, I, I just spit. You always be like, hey, buddy, what's your name? Oh, Aaron. Aaron. Sure. <laughs> Aaron, where you from, Aaron? It's like, oh, so, but you, oh, know man, you, you know what you're getting, though? Uh -huh. 
30 minutes into the show, he'll uh, go back to that same person exactly. and remember his name. And remember his name. That shit is amazing. I don't want to remember, remember their rhymes. I don't want to remember their rhymes. I remember some old racist name. white guy, you knew some English guy that was very hairy, right. and, then you, and you came back and you remembered all that shit. You don't smoke marijuana at all. No, but I don't okay. mind. I like, I like when it's smoked in front of me because I, I kind of <laughs> like the content. <laughs> I, I loved, I loved that cameraman when he was in that. I loved him. No, him when he was in that Steven Seagal movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm blood clad, Tessie. Are you even West Indian? Yeah. What are you? Oh, well, they, well, they, and then they, and the hair works. <laughs> Some of those two, you should have a word with them. <laughs> Happy bun and cheese. You know the crazy shit about what your act is, right? Is is very like borderline, like, you know, race. I try to be. Race related, I always right? try to be. But here's the crazy thing. So I thought at first, I was like, yo, man, he got to be careful. But then when I looked at everything, I was like, that's exactly what you should not be. The yeah. thing is, every race is funny. Yeah. Every race is prejudiced. I don't Pe- people, people get it because I go in, when I talk about their nationality, the culture, the race, whatever, uh-huh. I talk about it from shit that they think only they know about themselves. Exactly. That's and that's like when they go, Okay, hold on. It's true. He's dead on. He knows us. Mm-hmm. We can't be offended right now. Right. Like Cubans, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like, you know what happens when a Cuban gets a flat tire, right? They drown. Right. Now listen. Like, <laughs> my, <laughs> like my, my girl, my, this is real. My girl's Mexican and Honduran, right? And when she was in labor and they broke her water, candies fell out of her. That's how Mexican she is. Big <laughs> app. <laughs> Is it Tiger Bowl time? I don't, I don't even know what Tiger Bowl is. No, listen, I'm gonna be honest. I, by the way, by the way, I don't want to take Tiger Bowl, but I can see the fans right now. What is Tiger Bowl? This is it's. It's not, our comedian that we have. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are legends. We can't, we can't come here and you know pause. Do we, we don't have a uh, Mr. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee. Uh, you want the Tiger Bowl. Tiger Bowl. Come on, you want the Dominican break? Tiger Bowl? I mean, Tampa's the Dominican. Jesus. Dominican. Jesus. You got a Hispanic red bone. Yeah. <laughs> He's Dominican. What do you, what do you oh, have to say shit. about Dominicans? Oh, uh, yeah. shit. Dominicans, be careful. You're shaky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. Dear Elo Papi. Let's see how you're going to act after this shot. Is this fucking Mama Wana? It's Mama Wana. Give him just like me, a little, a little. Yeah. And, and Bobby, you can do this one. Yeah, do one. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a health shot. Yeah. DJ, healthy. Healthy living. If somebody plays some bachata while he's pouring. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> mama, E. Mama, E. Freddie fucking fucking Fox, fucking Knuckles, motherfucking Ian Victor Finn, Santiago and Eric. Salud! Salud! Ah! Buy a big box. My money. My that was money. That, that was that like dog piss? Yeah. <laughs> I never said it was good. Oh, should taste oh. like robot test. Come on, I want to rinse it down with that. Now, let me ask you That's something. That's an ancient, shiny secret we just gave you. Yeah, when I just drink cow dung. about you <laughs> is I understand. And it won't take you I, away. I see that you understand the internet. Mm-hmm. You understand it in real time. Mm-hmm. One of our brothers, KRS1, mm-hmm. yeah, I had him on here, and I don't think he understood the internet at the time. Because mm-hmm. what happened was, this is when African Mabada's story first broke. Right. Mm-hmm. Which one? The first one, the first one, the, right? The, the first the one. So we, we were all hurt in hip hop. Or the I one. Mean, the one that, you know, it digitally, virally. Right. Because, you know, everyone had heard, uh, obviously, things before, but this mm-hmm. is the first time. I'm trying to keep it down, fellas. This is the first time um, we had seen it virally, right? Mm-hmm. So KRS came here and we asked him. So he was like, yo, you know, what do you think about. The Bambada shit. So I don't think he had heard of it. Yeah, at the thinking time. that we already was. He knew what was he, going we, on. We, yeah. So you know, because sometimes we'll, we'll hold, hold this episode and drop it two weeks later, or mm-hmm. you know, you know, it, it, you know, sometimes. So what happened was, um, we asked him about the Bambada shit, and, he, and his response was, "Well, I don't care. I got Bambada's back." Ooh. Um, but he didn't. <laughs> no, know. no, 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 no. But 
Yeah, so he didn't. We didn't fully know the allegations at the time. No, he's oh, saying yeah. he, didn't, he didn't know about it yet. He didn't hear about it. But so like, based on him not knowing any of the facts, he's not going to comment, and he's going to have his back until he knows more of the facts. Mm-hmm. So what happens is the episode comes out. When the episode comes out, so many people critique him. And, yeah, yeah, and the thing true. was, we, we, had, no, we had no contact with, with KRS because we wanted him to just say. Because he, he went, no, he went to, to do a show. He went to Europe. Yeah, he, and he, he doesn't took fly, a boat. so he took, he took a cruise. A boat, so we couldn't get to Spain. Yeah, that's but crazy that he, he doesn't fly. So he, he, he took a cruise. He went to sell this for one line. So he's just saying, for like oh, I didn't know Africa Vermada's allegations. That was It was very simple because. At the time, he, he would have got it fully away from him. Like I said, we couldn't uh, con- get in contact with him. But you seem like somebody that's very abreast of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, how, 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 how you think he could have handled that situation? Ooh, Chris uh, or Chris. Bam? Oh, yeah. Chris? Chris, yes. Or both? I mean, well, well, Chris, Chris is a super intelligent dude. I, I think right. I think had he been given the facts... Right. He would have probably at the time we didn't even. I know think that. it was fair. It was just an allegation. Answer, and it was I just think, an allegation. But I also think it's unfair for everybody to want you to fucking hang somebody because they want to hang mm-hmm. somebody. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. not. I'm not one of. I, I never, I, I'm hanging. Not a big fan of, of of interest being interested in what other dudes do with they swipe and all that. Uh-huh. But I'm also not a fan of violating people's you know right. sexuality and all. I don't right. get into none of that shit. Because I feel like that's out of bounds, right. you know. For once you speak on somebody else's personal shit, right. now you gotta own the ramifications of your critiquing it. Mm. But you say something about a motherfucker and you don't know what it is, and you fuck around, and get your fronts knocked out. Right. Now you gotta own that. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's yeah. not called bumpy nuggets for no reason. Yeah, you gotta really be ready to know what you're talking about. A lot of times, people be so busy worrying about what other motherfuckers is doing. Like I said before, you always in another man's business or another person's business. You know, it's different if somebody jump on the internet and do, you know, when the girl jump on the internet and get naked and do all kind of shit and dudes come at her a certain way, uh-huh. she kind of owns that because of the, the way she's carrying herself. But when right. you just ask a random motherfucker, yo, what you think about this guy? And then you start saying shit about them and you don't and really you know. you lead them to it. You don't really know what the fucking right. shit is and you get your ass beat. Right. right. That's a whole nother ball game, man. So I'm very cautious about that kind of input for myself. Because you was kind of caught up in a little internet controversy where I, you did a DJ Vlad interview, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You said that um, you had a conversation with Birdman, but there's an actual audio of Wendy Day saying that, mm-hmm. nah, he, Bumpy Knuckles pulled out a gun on Birdman. It's kind of famous, man. I didn't it's, want to... I, 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 I you brought brought said, up. <laughs> and that fucking broad sold you out. Nah, I'm drunk now. It's yeah. about to happen. Yeah, no, she didn't sell him out. out. She, she, did, she definitely didn't sell him out. She's a friend of mine. She did sell, she, out. She didn't sell you out. She but, felt like it was out there. She was actually yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. bigging him up. Yeah. Yeah, she, I, she, she, Wendy's always been solid with me, bro. She's always right. been cool people. She, right. you know, I've never done any business with her, you know, right. because. She oh, she wow. was she, she, she so was, that was just out of love just friends bro like Wendy Day is the real deal like wow. when I tell you the real deal like that was just my home girl just in the, she always used to put me into like these panels speaking panels mm. and stuff like that but I never did like she, she's a deal maker she know how to make deals I think she got beat on the deal something like that but then right. if that's what she said and to you me, went whatever. to Hot ninety seven and I met with Birdman we had a conversation about it she said bump this is what's going on and you know. So I said, I said, so let me talk to him and you know see what it is. So the exact exactly what happened is just what I'm about to tell you to happen. Right. Went to Hot 97. Me and two of my guys, we went upstairs. Flex was me and Flex was cool at the time. So Flex would let you upstairs when he was cool with you back in the days and shit. Now you can't do that shit. Man. But I went, up, I, went, I went upstairs. Some dudes had a shootout in front of the. I don't know this yeah, guy's yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. 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 I went up. I went upstairs. I, 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 and. I told I said to Bird, I said, yo man, I, you know, they would get ready, they were finishing, I think finishing anyone anyway, Wayne. What was year there. was this? I, I don't even remember. Nineties so. and two thousands. I don't remember, bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so, it's okay. So, so drink so, chance fans, come to the fans. Yeah, I don't remember. When this year. shit come out, they're they gonna be telling us the exact date. Yeah, right, 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 right. So so I went upstairs, Wayne was there, you know, he he, he you know, I said what up to him, whatever. Mm. And he was a, he had a couple security guys with him. So Bird Birdman, you know, he on his own, you know, right. he, he said, yo, let's go, let's take a walk. So mm-hmm. we walked down, you know, we walked. Obviously, he knew who he was. Yeah, we walked oh. downstairs and shit. And uh, I told him, I said, hey, man, um, the situation with Wendy Day, you know, is is, 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 is bubbling and, and it's kind of a situation I want. I want to help her fix. So mm-hmm. is there any way I could get you and her to kind of hash this out? 
She's a good friend of mine, XYZ. He said, yeah, 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 we could do it, man, you know, whatever. So I put him on the phone with her. Right. And I left the man with my phone talking to her, and I walked away. The gun incident came because there was a kid across the street that oh, yeah. was lurking around. Right. And Birdman had a guy with him who kept noticing the guy. And I was like, I said, what's up, Thinking man? That he was with you. Yeah, he thought the guy was with me, but the right. guy wasn't with me. So I told the guy to come in. And I said, hey, yo, dog, come in for a second. And the kid came over there. And when he came over, I grabbed him, and then I pulled right. the gun on him. And oh, I said, okay. what you doing over there? And he said, yo, I just want an autograph. Oh, okay. And then I felt bad. I was like, oh, shit. You know, so I put my hammer away. Uh, and I get, you know. <laughs> he, waited, he, he, he waited for Birdman. Uh, Wait, no, Bumpy gave his autograph. He goes, who the fuck are you? Yeah. He goes, this is your autograph. Yeah, yeah. so he, that's what that was. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so at, the, at that time, the kid, the kid, you know, Birdman was talking to her on the phone. The kid went back and went on his way. And I wanted to make sure Birdman's guy wasn't right. uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? All right. right. And then after him and Wendy talked, me and, and him shook hands. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you know there's a cop coming around the corner every ten fucking minutes. So right. th- th- that turned into me putting this man on the ground and doing all this so bullshit, and yeah. it never happened that way. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I think your so reputation, there was a gun, but it had nothing to do with Birdman. Yeah, I didn't. I, didn't, I, wouldn't yeah. Do I think that your to reputation um, preceded itself at the time, yeah. and I think that. Um, I, that's probably the reason why because yeah. I, I look at you as an honorable man like, yeah I, people yeah. put a two on a ten you and know I gave that you shit. enough tiger bones to, 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 <laughs> to, if you if you, you would have just you know you know what I mean like yeah yeah you would have been but but I, I, I think that's honorable I think even you stepping up yeah. saying that you even you never even did business with Wendy Day uh-huh. but you wanted to do that I think that's just honorable I think that hip hop that's the reason why we started this show is just we want to keep honoring you know, you want to do another shot type of bonus? Me and you, you I'm just like, all right, come on, let's, let's leave me and Ed, come on, let's do it. Why? Because he's an idiot? And you, and you, because I, I don't want to. Let me tell you something, another one of them Tiger ones, I'm pushing him out of his chair and yes, I'm taking yes. this. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie, that's the one thing I've seen about your jokes is everybody can get it. Oh, yeah. The handicap get it. You said he didn't know what he got here? Yo, listen, listen, so He just fucking literally rolled up on us. Yeah, some guy came to the show in a wheelchair and he was like, yo, I never see somebody with corn in a good no, place. No, so no. I, I, expect, I, I respect that style of comedy where everyone knows that you're not being offensive. <laughs> Never. But, but I, my shit's always coming from, from a happy place. Yeah, so. And you can see it in my eyes. He'd be like, fuck that guy. If I was, <laughs> if I was being a dick, he, a great guy. he knows. Be open this all, man. Yeah, this all right. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm now, give me your wallet, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring it with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was, I was probably not even No effing. Uh, uh, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> listen, you were always effing when I was growing up. You, excuse me, you used to do mixtapes, right? Yeah. I bought some of your mixtapes back in the day. Really? Now you really hip hop, bro. I am. You I'm a nerd. Really really. Hip-hop, so bro. now, no, you know how. Let me, what's up with Socrates from Toronto? Is he, from, is he from Toronto? Yeah, he is. Imani? Of course he is. Salud. I should just go ahead and say that. Give me some ice. Ah! It's it's one more and you're walking. It's too late. Yo, so they definitely sell us in Mumbai. Now, what, that? <laughs> That's a flashlight in Mumbai. <laughs> so now I have to ask Is there any like um, brown on brown comedy crime? Like, any no, I'm, you, you, here's you, the you problem. Don't get along with certain... I get along with everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm basically the bumpy knuckles of the of the Indian comedy world, Ooh. where they kind of look at me and go, all right, he, he knows what he's doing. Mm. I mean, I used to box, I do mm. jujitsu, and I'm an older guy. So. Are you saying you will beat Aziz's ass? Because oh, he's too. a little dude, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's a little dude. He's a little dude. He's kind of amazing. Yeah. He ain't never had it like that. Right. He never got jumped. He never right. been in fucking fights. He never been around shootouts. It's not his thing. That's not his thing. Yeah, he, not, I've been around that shit. It's not like I was doing it, but right. I was there running from it the same way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I was a fucking gangster. Or, Shoot me, motherfucker. Like, fuck that. I remember hiding in the DJ booth with a metal crate on my head. Look at that shooting. Stop. Stop it. God damn it. And then I was, when there was a chick beside me, I pushed her away. Get the fuck out of here. This is 
Didn't you, didn't you spar with Joe Rogan recently? I uh, rolled with him. Yeah, I do jujitsu. I'm a blue belt. He's a, he's a black belt. Man. I fight Jake Paul. Okay, hold on, hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. <laughs> so, was there ever an issue with you and Aziz? Like, is there? It was like more of a disrespect kind of thing, which we pretty much sorted out. So I feel like 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 you're like the OG. And oh, like, y'all have beef for real? Nah. Well, Indians can't have beef. Um, <laughs> Dance off. And, and he's disease, so he can't have pork. No, but whatever. Oh, because <laughs> Pakistan. No, no, he's Indian, but he, he's Muslim. But whatever. He, <laughs> no, the thing is, I, you know, when I first met him, I took it a certain way that I felt like he was disrespectful. He felt like he's a dick. Yeah, and then I, and then, and then let's, I. Let's talk about that. No, he, I thought he was a dick when I met him. Okay. And then when, when I after that? talking to people, they were like, "No, that's just how he is." And I go, "So he's a dick?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah, oh, he's not." It's not specific to you. Yeah. He's, he's not your dick. dick. He's just a dick. Yeah, yeah. He's not a dick to you. He's just a dick. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, okay. So when I, I met him and he wanted to fix it, and I was like, cool. And then when all that shit happened with him, oh, when he was me too. Yeah, it was a fucked up bullshit. It was a bullshit me too. It's a fucked up bullshit. It was a fucked up me too. Because he ate some bitch out and she didn't like it. No, here's the thing. This me too is whack because it's like all it is whack is me too. All it is like you had no game. That's all it is. It was what? He had no game. That's what his me too was. Well, I thought his me too because he ate the bitch pussy and she whatever it was. It was whack. She felt uncomfortable after that. Right. No, she felt uncomfortable when she felt it was the right time to feel uncomfortable. Right. And that's what I'm talking about. And you know, we may not be the best of friends. And we may not be the best of friends, but oh. when that shit happened, yeah, I, I shot him an email wild. and I was like, yo, I want you to know I'm riding with you. Yeah, that's no, that's and then the real shit about. is that's his email did. bounced back because he gave me the wrong fucking email. Oh. 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 And then I went, you know what? That's in line with your behavior. And now when I'm taking personal anymore, I'm like, that's just who he is, dog. I mean, it ain't personal. So you guys, I mean, I'm, I'm not to say it like that. I really don't hate nobody. Man. No, no, I mean neither. But I, I'm not to say it like that. But like, you guys ain't come up in like the same comedy. No, I've been doing it 30 years, dog. Oh, okay. When I was, I started '89. He started maybe 2000 and something. Mm. That's like, you know, mm. you know, it's, yeah. you know. I knew a girl like, named Superhead. She yeah. gave Superhead. <laughs> she lived in my building. She even gave the Superhead. <laughs> Aziz, I'm trying to. Here's the thing. If you, the, you, you say like you're Jay Z or like you're like Nas, what do, what do you want to um, be? What do you want to be? Like I want to be KRS. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, because but, he don't have the mainstream success, but he got the respect in the game. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And he's gonna work forever. He will. Yeah, that's who I want to be. And Aziz is. Aziz is. Um, be very he's careful. like one of them new cats. Uh, I need One of the new rappers, you know what I mean? I need mean? to hear, I need to hear. Let's see. Because I, I know you know, so I need to hear. I need to see who it be. And listen, listen. Michael Rappaport recently critiqued uh, uh, Meek Mill, and people would like discredit it. Michael Rappaport. I need you to be very careful. Okay, let me see. Yes. I I'm not really concerned with either way. Um, who would Aziz be? Or make up a name that sounds like a name. No, no, I'm going to be you real. You like KRS with KRS bank account or with KRS with Jay-Z's bank account? I don't even know what KRS bank I, account is. I am, I don't know, I'm just asking. I am KRS with Jay-Z's bank account. Mm. Already. Okay. KRS with That's why I want to stay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying. I, in the yeah, public eyes, Jay-Z yeah. is the richest. Yeah. In the public eyes. Like the public eye? Let's, I'm dealing with the public eye right now. I got to deal with how I'm living. I'm living real fucking great. As Aziz. Aziz, Aziz. So who will Aziz be? Aziz or I like Aziz too. I like both y'all brown niggas. I, mean, I, I, I listen, to be honest, I really got a problem with disease, oh, man. And I and, and I felt I bad when that bit. shit. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> it. It ain't worth it. You know what I mean? It ain't. It, the, what, yeah, what, it's what, it's it ain't even worth it. So okay. Aziz I mean, I hope. It, it, I mean, it's Rocky. Yeah, one of them. You said ASAP Rocky. How about yeah. ASAP? Uh, which one got fur? Yeah. You know, like one of them ASAP dudes. How about Bobby? No, not Bobby Schmurter got respect. Um, uh, that cut deep. Yeah, dude, he, he's designer. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. Wait, okay, all right. Let's I be feel clear. Bad for designer. <laughs> Let's be clear. Big up designer. But designer is known for sounding. Like 
like somebody else. I know, but they all sound like each other. So it ain't specific to designer. Mm. They all fucking sound like the same dude, whoever they're trying to fucking sound like. Mm. So you're saying... I want to ask you and Bumpy a question. So you say every comedian after you is under you. No, no, they're not under me. Mm. But, the, but the thing is, Indeed. I'm first. Mm. I came first, and it doesn't matter who comes... After me, you the cool who, comes, this shit. who comes bigger than me, who comes more successful than me. The bottom line is, kiss the motherfucking ring. You the cool worker, Indian comedy. You don't speak, you don't speak, uh, uh, Indian. You like me, like you front it good. Oh, I front like a motherfucker. Uh, the same way, <laughs> so he spoke Spanish, he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. CC, motherfucker. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> you were the guy that will say, you were the guy that will say, Louboutin sneakers with the spikes, I don't wear, uh, I that's don't a wear weirdos. Those. I'm a hood, hood nigga. nigga. I don't, I don't wear those. those. That's a fact. Oh, now, let, let me ask you this, both of y'all, yeah. since we both in the same room. Yes. A lot of people don't know this. Yeah. Y'all had a problem behind the oh, scenes yeah. a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, so that, Damn, thank you for bringing that up. And, <laughs> and it never <laughs> got, it got squashed behind the scenes and it got squashed real nice. Yes. No, because you know why, what I felt? I felt um, similar to like how you said Red Alert. You said Red Alert wouldn't play your records, but he told you to your face. Mm -hmm. I felt like that's what you was telling me. Like I felt like you was like, yo, don't get no money and start slapping. I felt like that's what I was, that's what you were saying to me mm -hmm. on, on the joint. So um, when you said that, I was just like, fuck it, I just gotta go back. Mm -hmm. And we went back and we, we seen each other, the, the Benz dealer, right? Mm -hmm. On 57. A BMW. Uh, a BMW dealer on 57th Street. That's how, that's how. Oh, Wise was, didn't get in, in between you guys too? Uh -huh. Uncle Wise. No. Oh, no, no, no. I, no, no, no. Thought, I, I thought that was the uh, story. Uh, no, here's, let, me, let, me, let me explain to you where it came yeah. from. Okay, cool. When I was doing Industry Shakedown, mm. I was in a place where I was looking at the entire industry, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm in a barbershop. If I'm not mistaken, it was a barbershop Which one's somewhere special? in Long Island. And you know when you're in a barbershop, people start saying, oh, this motherfucker can rap better than this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. that can so somebody said, Nori is my nigga. I love Nori. Everything Nor that nigga Nori show. And I was like, so one kid said, fuck that. Nori's is better than that. But now he's got this record out where he mm -hmm. was just what, what on it. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. I think he's stuck. He's staying like he's the industry got him stuck there. Right. So they, you know, this guy said that, and, and it struck a nerve in me. Like, mm. damn, it's crazy how mm. how much people really critique us mm. as artists. Yeah. So True. I started writing inside your head, and I'm sitting there, and this shit was inside my head. So mm. I said, I'm sick and tired of Nori saying what, what, what. <laughs> Write some rhymes, my nigga. Give this shit up, up, up. Because I know he's nicer than that, but. I never said, I should have said the nicer part, but right. when he heard it, I felt like what I said to you was take that Bob did the Bob bullshit on. Right. And uh. he took a Freddie Fox, he took the gun and put me in a box. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, why the shit? He really took this shit hard. Like right. he was heated with me. Right. Like that shit. Right. That was him. That's him. That motherfucker was lying. That's you why. You know why? Because we had a record before Industry Shakedown yeah. that was like a pre, and I was the dude campaigning. Yeah. So I was like, I felt the same way when Nas did that to me. I was campaigning, and sometimes, but when you, when I later realized, like you said to me, uh, you didn't say it to me directly, like you said with Red Alert. Mm -hmm. I, I, when you when you said that story, I was like, that's the same as that story. That's how you feel. But the funny shit it was, one time Maceo from Daylight called me, he said, yo man, I was on the fucking Puerto Rican Day Parade floating, I played your fucking record, it almost killed me. We so good with that. That shit right there. I said, okay, wait. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I'm gonna tell you the beautiful thing about the whole shit was, man, yeah. yep. was 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 when we were able, to, when I was able to to, right. to to send your kids to Monday Night Raw, man. Yeah, oh, no, 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 I was gonna get to that. Oh my, listen, yeah, let me bro. tell you something. Crazy shit was. Me and me and them, like, like I said, we, we sparred, we did what I had. To, I knew it was coming from an older brother perspective. Mm -hmm. So after I knew that, I chill. What happened was. I knew that he, you had to connect with John Cena. That's my I, man. I don't, yeah. I don't know if he was writing this round or whatever. Nah, nah, nah. We just making music together. Right. So, you want to write for him? Nah. So oh, my kids, Benzino kids, and I forget who else kids. Oh, it was your, your kids, right? 
So we all and I'm like, damn, WrestleMania. So I, I hit I hit him, I said, I know this is crazy because like, <laughs> <laughs> me asking for this is kinda like yeah. retarded, but like, yo, um you think you could get WrestleMania tickets for yeah, me? WrestleMania, yeah. And he was like, I got you. And like it was like 14 minutes later, like flat line, boom. And I remember like looking to the kids, they was like, so we gonna go? <laughs> and I was like, I think. But I, and then 14 minutes later, he's like, you good. Your name is at World Call. And I was like, you don't need to know my name? He said, come on, no, I know your fucking government name. Yeah. And I was like, I was, it was so gangster. And I was like, damn. And I, I never really, I thank you over the phone. Nah, it was but I want to thank you in the face because you know what? You made me father of the year for that year yeah. because no one, Benzino couldn't get tickets. I forget, it was, it was Kaz and it was one other person that was that bailed out on us. I still got the chair in my crib. Yeah. And I was the, I was so, thank you so much. Tell you something, bro. It was not only was it an honor to do yeah. it for you, bro, mm-hmm. but it was, you the only yeah. motherfucker that said thank you. Whoa, wow. So wow. Benzino, you motherfucker, I didn't even <laughs> know your kids win. <laughs> 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 that's right, that's right. You were but, but, but Benzino's my man. Right, that's right, that's right. That's right. I, 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 I was honored to do it for you guys, mm. man, and, mm. and make sure that I felt like I, I it, made, it, it lifted a burden off me, man, because right. I'm going to be honest with you. I always, that was the, it was two things about Industry Shakedown right. that, I, that I wish. I could have really had a be- better way of explaining, but when you right. writing off emotion, it was your yep. line right. and the Sylvia Rome thing. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? She just got promoted too, right? Yeah, that's that, that's cool. You know, yeah. and, and I'm and I'm not a, I'm not an industry. I don't right. chase deals. I don't go right. to labels. I just feel like there's a there's a there's I don't really fit into the mold of industry. I never did well at major labels. I had a few major deals. I just don't do well. Because a big there. part of your career, people uh, say that you're a black ball, right? Yeah, yeah. I was and, born that way anyway. So and, just, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> you got but, black balls. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. Well, well, one of the things is for these new kids coming up, um, because even when I, uh, I, I even Googled you, one of the first things that popped up mm-hmm. was blackballed from such a... Yeah. They had an actual timeline. I didn't screenshot it, but mm-hmm. they actually had a timeline. I'm not good at Google. Mm-hmm. So, but they actually had a timeline where you thought, like, from <clears throat> year from 80 to something, where they, they actually pinpointed where you thought you was blackballed. It's, yeah, it you, was. You, it, I mean, there was a lot of times that, there was a lot of people that even today, man, shake my hand and were part of the, part of the process of saying, Yo, don't fuck with him. If you, because if you don't sell, and you think records, that started from Flavor Unit? You know? <clears throat> it might have. If that, if that's true, it might have. It might have. Why? Because right. of Flavor Unit, though. It might have. Because he was signed to Flavor Unit back then. Yeah. Right. But, and you and felt then, like the Flavor Unit was a, well, a, 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 like a, um, like they looked out for. I think I don't know if it was actually. It wasn't. I don't think it was Queen Latifah, or I don't think it was Shaq Kim. Right. I think it was people that were in the office there, mm. around them, that felt like you know, you know, so, we, we, if, listen, if you drop the ball. You're not gonna say, I dropped the ball. You're gonna say, the nigga threw the shit so right. fucked up that I uh, yeah. couldn't catch it because it's it was slick. way over there right. and my arms ain't that long. You know what I mean? So, listen, I got caught up in the middle of a lot of politics uh-huh. at, at Flavor Unit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and I never got a chance to really say that I, I, I appreciated that Shaquem and Latifah and, and Naughty by Nature Camp gave me an opportunity to really rock out, you know? But business is business. You was on Tommy Boy? No, right? I was not. Nah, I wasn't on okay. Tank. I was on Tommy Boy. Yeah, yeah. Continue. Yeah. 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 What you say? Yeah. The rest of Flavor Unit yeah. was. Yeah. 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 Not all of them. No, only yeah. uh, Tommy Boy was. Naughty, Naughty. Apache. Apache was Queen Latifah. Latifah. Yeah. So Flavor yeah. Unit was the management? Yeah, yeah. 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 Flavor Unit was my management. And then they right. did Flavor Unit Records. So it was a big right. compilation. Right, because I know they had the record label. It was a compilation. I remember that posse. A lot of that politics with Epic. Benzino was in there. Yeah, yeah, Made Men. What was Benzino doing in there? It was a group of Made Men. That was after all. Almighty RSO? No, yeah, no, no. Like, Almighty was, RSO is a part of that. Yeah, that was okay. That was, yeah, was, yeah, was yeah. already. Right. Y'all went on tour yeah. together, or some shit, right? <laughs> and then, and then, and then, DJ and, nerd. And, and allegedly, you put on a gun on Zeno too, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Wait, wait, what alleged shit allegedly. are you guys talking about? <laughs> Yo, listen, a lot of this <laughs> gun <laughs> play <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yo, but listen, no, you I'm have a reputation, bro. Nah, yeah, yeah, you definitely did. Yeah. That's why we knew when he said when you said my name, I was like, strap up, nigga. <laughs> like, I wasn't gonna bring up you guys think that. Nah, 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 no, 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 no. It's 2019. Me, He's no, like Oakland. You. He's hammerless. No, let me tell you something. 
as as an OG, like when he said, "Yo, I got older and I realized what Red Alert said to me was just he just didn't like my record. It wasn't like he didn't like me. He didn't like my movement. Mm -hmm. This is what he's saying that uh, he said Red Alert told him. So as I watched that today, I was like, that's the same exact thing. The thing was that's how I, felt. I took it as as I got older it was like, yo, you were saying because I, I, you know, to a certain extent, that's what Steve Style said. Steve Style came on here and said, at a certain point in your career, you got money and you slack. I didn't look at it like that, but certain people did, and I can't be the person that sit around and be like, nigga, you, you didn't slap. If this is what, you know, you're being accused of, sometimes you gotta go, and it made me step my shit up. So I always appreciated that as I got older. As a young nigga, mm -hmm. I was mad as shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But as I got older, I, that's why I was, I was, I was loving to uh, 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 bring that up right now. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't really, like, like honestly, I'm glad okay. that it came out because mm -hmm. I was gonna bring it up anyway, but mm -hmm. the end of the day, mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta face these type of things with people, man. As men, you know, we and men. as MCs, yeah. no, as, as, as men, you're men, right. Men first, MCs, MCs second. You know, what as, I'm saying? as MCs, you better be tested. Yeah, you gotta be. You and, better be tested. And, and, and I always yeah. said this. I said, I, you know, I noticed after I said that, you never said what what no more. <laughs> yeah, but, but but I did two records with you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you yeah. body both of them shots. Oh, and thank I mean, hard body. And I mean, I listen to them when I work out. I haven't worked out in a minute. I've been fucking up. Yeah, we listen to them when I work out. Math problem. Worst case. And at the end of the day, you always. I respected lyricists yep. I've always respected yep. you as a lyricist yep. I've always respected you as a, and, and I remember yep. going back and forth on the phone with you like when yep. we got the beats like you yep. know what I mean and yep. come on the, the song yep. that I did on um, I think BAP yep. the one BAP on my collection album yep. which it was supposed to be a me and Nori song and then yep. it ended up being something else and, you know all these mm. great MCs out here yep. now you definitely yep. to, in my book yeah are in, a, in my top 15 Cause, cause, cause you came in an era like and remember Let me just tell y'all something A lot of people don't credit me man I don't nigga that made niggas do ad-libs again man Oh yeah You know what I'm saying I don't nigga oh, yeah. And he yeah. got his own language Yeah yeah, yeah. Like, You know what I'm saying He's got his own language you got your own language, so I mean, and, and, you know, when, right. you, when, it, when it boils down to to what hip hop is really right. about, right. you know, mm. I don't really have regrets like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like when you regret it, you had no business doing it in the first place. I, right. I, I was, I was, when I wrote from a place of passion, right. and right. what was going on in my head. How I many things you know? Look at right. you were talking about earlier about right. who really writes. Right. Let me these dudes to look at a motherfucker and they crew that's right. busting his gun and going to jail, and yeah. it's their story yeah. on, the, on records. They're not saying it about him; they saying it about themselves. So. You know, and, and another thing about you, you never glorify selling drugs. Nope. Not once. I never, like, I never sold You drugs. said it on an interview, and I literally went through all your music yeah. trying to catch it. I don't sell drugs. Like, I don't so sell literally. Because if I, we didn't do it, he's no, not no, going to glorify I see, I see an interview with um, you, and I think that's Preem Brother. Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Real Rap? Oh, yeah, rap. Rap. Yeah, rap. 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 Yeah, rap. Yeah, rap. That's our man. And yeah. rap, rap is a Supreme Magnetic yeah, Brother? Yeah, that's older brother. Older oh, brother. okay. That's older yeah. brother. Rap's the one with the right? actually rap, and okay. the Supreme kind of kind of caught the so, trickle down. So I heard right. that, and then when I heard this, a caller called in, and you, you, I stopped the caller. You say, listen, I want to be clarified because there's two people up here, mm -hmm. and one of them is not glorifying selling drugs, but he's, he's, he's saying his past mm -hmm. life. And I'm telling you that I never said that. Check all my rhymes. So I had to challenge you. Bro, let me tell you something. And I went story. through your whole catalog. Here's a funny story about me. Here's a funny story about me <laughs> trying, trying to like, sell drugs. Yeah. This is the most, this is probably the most realest shit you'll ever hear. Okay. I'm in Boston. Mm -hmm. Big Chuck. Okay. Right? Legendary motherfucker. Not Chuck, chill out. Big Chuck. Okay, Big, okay, Big okay. Chuck's a legend okay. in Boston. California, okay. Boston legend. And <clears throat> I'm hustling in Boston, uh -huh. but I'm not selling drugs. I'm pimping and shit. Right. Okay. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm running around and, I'm, and I, got a, I got a mean stable, big stable. I'm down in the combat zone. And Chuck said, yo, man, you know, I, I got some work. I'm going to put some work out. So I said, yeah, give me that shit. I got this. I ain't never sold drugs. I never, it's never been my forte. Right. So he said, all right, you know, you got to hide this shit. So I go behind the bushes and I start digging a hole and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what the fuck are you doing? I said, I'm hiding the drugs. I said, what the fuck? He said, what the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck your big ass out the bushes and shit. <laughs> so I got, I'm crawling out of the bushes and shit. The motherfucker said, yo, man, give me my shit, man. He took the shit and he picked, he opened the condom. He put the pack to the condom and threw the shit on the ground. He said, who you know gonna pick up a condom? Uh. 
I was like, oh shit. I said, man, let me get back to these bitches, man. You know that sound like sound like me when I thought I was gonna sell drugs. I'm not a drug dealer. I'm not a drug dealer. No, I'm not ever trying to sell drugs. I'm not a drug dealer. Especially this is Toronto? This is Toronto. Here's what happened to me. I was like, I needed money. It must have been late eighties, early nineties, and I was like, yo, I need fucking money. Crack epidemic? But this was just weed I was selling. Right, or hash. Say, I say, because I want to see it. We didn't have to sell crack. No, here's the thing. Here's the, how you did in school. No, here's the thing. I did terrible yeah, school. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, knew these, I knew these Asian cats that were selling drugs. They were selling coke. They were selling weed. They were selling Asians hash. Asians or Haitians? Asians. Asian Haitians. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, Betis. Hey, Masisi. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these cats I knew were selling all kinds of, pushing all kinds of weight, I, uh, and I was like, "Yeah, stop!" It was like a, these are Asian, Asian cats selling cocaine. They were selling all kinds. I don't want to be racist, but are they down with the white dragons? Definitely. Uh, what right. Asian? What kind of Asian guys? guys? They were they were Chinese and they were Vietnamese. It was two of them. Uh, oh. Yeah, they and they were pushing all kinds. Of, and they knew me, and they knew me, and they knew I didn't do anything. So they were like. They fronted me a bunch of uh, hash, mm. black hashish. Uh, they give me a brick it. like this big. Mm. And I was like, oh, good. They go, you can sell it. Here's what we want, our $200, and you can make whatever you make after that. I was like, done. Right. I think, where the fuck does Stacko go? He's Jesus selling Christ. hashish. I so Stacko and I, <laughs> I, pulled a, I pulled a lid from a fucking steel pot in my mom's kitchen. Right. I brought it down to my bedroom. I put the brick. Cut, 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 cut. Cut, 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 cut. I said, stack, pass me tinfoil pieces. Wrapping all my shit up in tinfoil. Bagging it all up. My first sale is to my friend's older brother. Oh. I'm like, yo, Miguel, ask your brother. Why you gotta do Miguel, bro? <laughs> He's Jamaican. Why you gotta do <laughs> Wait, his older brother. His <laughs> older brother. <laughs> did, did, did he just say no, Miguel is Jamaican? Yeah. Yeah. I said, yo, be Jamaican. I was like, yo, Miguel, does Everett want any wit? Does Everett want any wit? That's different. Yo, does Miguel, yo, Miguel, does Everett want any hash? Let me call him. Yo, he goes, yeah, he wants ten dollars worth. I'm like, word, yeah. I got this. <laughs> I had a nice little piece. I must have cut it like this. I must have. Yeah. I give it to Everett. I go, yo, Everett, here. He gives me my ten bucks. I'm like, my first sale. Proud as fuck. Right. Half an hour later, <laughs> Everett comes back to me. I'm hanging out with Miguel. Everett's like, yo, I don't want this no more. I'm like, what? Fuck you mean you don't want this no more? I don't want to get my money back. Yeah, yeah, I'm the only drug dealer with a return policy. So I know this is not my life. So I give him his $10. I go, wait, wait, let me see it. I take it. You know when you break black hash, it goes brown in the middle. I was like, okay. And I'm like, and I, it smells sort of like hash, but that's because I've been cutting the hash all day. It's on my fingers. And I'm like, all right, here. I give him his money back. I take the hash back. But I'm like, something don't seem right. Mm. I lick it. <laughs> this motherfucker gave me back, you know, nibs? The black licorice? <laughs> he took the fucking hash and put a piece of black licorice and gave it back to me. Because when you break, break, break black licorice, it's brown inside. <laughs> but because the weed, the hash smells on my fingers so strong, I'm like, it must be. But when I taste it, I go, what the fuck gave me licorice? <laughs> So yeah. my first deal, I got fucked. Yeah, I never was a big drug dealer thing because I felt like, <laughs> number one, drug dealers are good at math. Right. You gotta be good at math. Right. Number two, Stacko's good at math. Number two, <laughs> it's one of the most cutthroat things. Like, it's it's a really cutthroat game, bro. And that's just like, I used to watch cats that I knew grew up, man, growing up, man, in that shit. And same guys know your mama. No, your brothers and sisters will blow your brains out. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, I just never was interested in that shit. I never was good at it. I never, I never, I never lied about being good at it. There's a lot of motherfuckers who say they did it who never did it. Right. Now, you know, you want to talk about busting a gun, or you want to talk about sticking up somebody, or some dumb shit like that? I've done mm. those dumb shit, those dumb th- those things before. But all that drug dealer shit, I sucked at that shit, bro. I was good at English, which is why. I had a quick rap game, you know, and I, and I, you know, that's my thing. I like that was my favorite thing. English was always my favorite thing, reading and shit like that. You know what I mean? I got Sway notes. This is notes from Sway. Did I see you in the Sway notes? Sway Callaway. Sway notes is very long. Oh, Sway yeah, Callaway. I ain't gonna lie. That's Hold on, Sway. Sway. This is my brother there, yeah, bro. Man, man. Nah, that's our family, right? It's my man. Sway's the other hip hop historian from the West Coast. 
from the bay. Definitely, definitely. Glad you watched Coast. I used to buy fucking uh, Sway and Tech. Uh, fucking, they used to release volumes of their mix. From the like, radio show. Yeah, from the, the wake up show, the freestyles. I used yep. to buy all of them. I think they went up to, Legendary. I think they went up to 13 or 14. I bought every yeah. fucking one of them. Legendary. So, how weird was it when you made it? You made it to the Forbes list. You, you, you I didn't know I was doing that. I was no, just no, doing no, my no, shit. No, hit me up. You made it to the Forbes list. You get a chance to do a party. Mm-hmm. And your publicist. Tell your publicist. I ain't got no publicist. Oh, you had a white girl in the, in oh, the van. Yeah, yeah. At, at one point, just in my mind, this publicist right, right, like, like, right? in my mind, just let me ride with this. Word, word. <laughs> so, and, and you tell them I want to party with Cool Herc and Sadat X. They're like, why not hire Leonardo DiCaprio? And no, no. Here, let, let me stop. You. Did it happen like that? In my no, mind, it didn't happen like saying. that at all. Oh. I had a publicist. She was there for my show. Okay, the white. Girl. I wanted, yeah, the white girl. <clears throat> And then Vic Black, Primo's guy, hit me. He's like, yo, Russ, you want to do a party after the show? And I'm like, fuck yeah, Vic. I go, but I want rappers there. He's like, I got you. So we had DJ Primo. Original rappers. Original, I want real rappers. Yeah. And, you know, Melly Mel and Grandmaster Kaz are my people. They're like, it's like family to me. Mm-hmm. Like, they come spend Thanksgiving. They come spend Christmas, New Year's, whatever it is. They, they're, they're with me. They're, it's the uh, same as Bumpy. It's like family. I know his kids. You know what I mean? It's not like we're like some on some certain some industry friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Industry. yeah, it's like I don't believe in that industry shit. I thought I thought you was gonna change like once you blew up. No, no, no. That's when I got real. All right, cool. Money, money, it, money, def- money shows you who you really I are. I like that. Like I, if you I, an I, asshole, you're gonna be a big fucking I mean, asshole. Ass. To get money. <laughs> it's like steroids. Yeah, and if Shout you out steroid twin in the building, so right? <laughs> steroid right. twin. Why does that look like you standing yeah. here? <laughs> Twist your spine. Oh, this is some bullshit. No, <laughs> no but <coughs> that's beautiful. That's fuck, he looked just like you. God damn. I can't believe Savion Glover's your brother. Right. <laughs> that's all. What are you? What's your mix? I'm Dominican straight. One. I gotta go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. Mm. Nori's friends are Dominican. Yeah, I know. I don't smoke, but fuck it. One time. <laughs> So what what is what is your favorite part of being a comedian? Obviously, um, you know, making people laugh is one. But but like, what made you fall in love with with saying? With with me, it was just like I've always liked seeing people smile. Mm. I like seeing people that are fucked up Mm. find something to laugh at. Like this dude, his shit, his life sucks. Mm. But. <laughs> but but I can see in his yeah, face. He I can see in his head. face he that he's like, I don't give a fuck about this. Yeah. I'm still here. Yes, sir. And that's what I recognize when I see people. Yep. I go, I see in their eyes, and I go, I see what makes them happy, and I'm gonna try and find that connection so I can continue your happiness like right. that. Yeah, that's real. So yeah. so no matter what it is, like uh, Bumpy introduced me to rap. When he first got out of jail and rap and I connected like that. Okay, when you say rap, you gotta be clear. Um, OG rap. Yeah, OG rap. Supreme Magnetic's older brother. Wow. Right, big and one. And, we and, and the whole time I'm talking to you, side note, the whole time I'm talking to you, there's a, a straight hair hanging off your head. Uh, I got, I got um, a gray hair? I got, no, it's a. It's, 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 no, no, no. no, 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 no I got one Oh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck that is, but she, that ain't you. She be mocking my territory, I guess. <laughs> I met your wife. She don't let you fuck around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She around here somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Pop out the light. What the fuck out, you say? Come out the water. <laughs> it's in Cuba and Puerto Rican. It's definitely dangerous. Oh, yeah. It's definitely dangerous. But, um... So, what, uh, what, uh, what is your favorite part of being a comedian? Like, just, just seeing people laugh. Mm-hmm. 
I don't like that people stop and go, oh, I feel so bad for you. I'm like, fuck right. that. Yeah. At the end of the day, he don't want me to feel bad. He's like, mm. just talk to me like you're talking to them. Otherwise, you're going to make me feel bad. Mm. It's the same way I'm stamping on him. You, you, right, you, right. you all going to get it the same way. Because right. to me, there is no like, there's no line above men are this, women are that. Right. This person's that. This is not. It's a straight line. Right. And that's probably my problem in the game because when I meet CEOs, I don't talk to them any different than I spoke to the valet guy just now. Right. So the valet guy, I'm like, what's up, man? And then I get in the CEO, how much fucking money am I? They get mad. I honestly have, on, on my word, I fucking sat in these meetings with like, with like fucking heads of, heads of networks. And I'm like, how much money you make? And they're like, what? And I go, you heard me? I mean, you know how much money I make and you're paying me. So how much fucking money do you make that this, my shit ain't bothering you? But, so, they get all fucked up because so, they're not used to people being real. So, so, so one of the uh, jokes that you did, uh, you was speaking to an Asian guy. Or an Asian guy you. said something, and then you said, "Me, you said me, me doing that is like watching you drive." <laughs> and everyone laughed, right? And he laughed, and he laughed <laughs> because he knew. And the, and but this is day and time. Is those jokes? actually dangerous because it's only dangerous to the people that don't get them if you're not in that zone mm. don't fucking judge that zone like I laughed <clears throat> but at the same token I could see where someone could be offended you know what I'm saying yeah because of course but everyone could be offended by everything uh, you don't think you're gonna get complaints about me talking to him like this what shit you're out of your mind do you, people do you, are gonna be do you feel yeah. like it seems and I've heard because where does it come I've yeah. seen like like Seinfeld's talked about this like the political correctness has been disturbing comedy recently. Right. Mm-hmm. It's getting I mean, Seinfeld's up. the one guy in the world who's ever going to have to worry about that. Yeah, he won't you know what I mean? Uh, he won't. So why oh, is he outspoken? Yeah, yeah, so why is he outspoken because about Because he's worth $300 million. So he's, he's like, he can be. Yeah, right. give a fuck. All right. right. What are you going to do? Take his money away? They have right. white privilege. Mm. <laughs> right. That's right. above right. white privilege. That's Jew privilege. Jew that's even right. higher. That's even higher. Wow. Yeah. Do you think that's like helping... Is it destroying comedy to a certain extent? No, it's, o- it's only destroying the young, weak-minded people that may be com- influenced right. by that. Right. But right. the true comics are never going to be like, oh, my God. That I only think that when I'm commenting on people's pictures. There's so many times I want to say shit because I know the person and they know how I'm going to take it. But then some other fuck face is going to read it. The read wrong, it in yeah. his tone. Here's the problem. People read shit in their voice. So if you're happy, you're going to read it in a happy yeah, voice. If you're miserable, you're going to read it well, in like, a miserable instance, voice. Kevin Hart, he had this controversy with he got and that was some shit. bullshit too. Shit, you know why? Right? And then that was some bullshit. Michael man. Blacksmith, <coughs> Blacksmith. Blacksmith, Blacksmith yeah. sounds like somebody who's trying to be a black man. Uh, cool, cool. You know what I mean? Starts Blacksmith. I'm a, I'm a Blacksmith myself. He said, uh, he, said, he said he said comedians are not off limit. So he went. Michael out of, said that. Yeah, he we said, are always off limit. No, he said no, no, he's like he's not he's like he's like other comedians are not off limit. Like you know, that was a real controversy that. Um, oh, I thought it was the thing that got him off of hosting the. No, 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 no. Are you talking about the Oscar shit? No, no, no. He's talking about something else. Oh, so, sure, okay. when you know they got accused of cheating or some shit in Vegas, caught with a girl. So Michael Blacks- oh. Blacksman, or how do you say his name, um, kept you know making jokes of the shit. So you know Charlemagne and different people were saying, you know, is this the point where you're going too far? Is there ever time with comedians? Uh, the only going? time it's bad is if comedians start trying to police comedians. That's mm. when it gets into a fight. We're like, wait, what happened? That means we've been infiltrated by people that aren't comedians. Uh, and comedians, uh, we automatically like. I tell this to the audience sometimes that yeah. when it, when you see a comedian and they're getting dark, you're only seeing twenty percent of the darkness because mm. we got some dark shit like comics. Mm. Comic to comic, like, yeah, we, like an artist. Comics because you gotta go through something to raise something. Yeah, right. Like but comic to comic, we'll text Monique each other the like he kind of fuck like most fucked up shit. Mm. Steve Harvey critiqued Monique. Like I, I felt like he, he critiqued. <clears throat> Steve was a lot of pocket on that. I thought so too. He was out of pocket. At least he critiqued us. But 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 at least he critiqued it to her face. Yeah. Like the black yeah. was going on other people's oh other people's platforms. Platform. Wait wait, he said it to her. And, yeah, he put yeah, all yeah, on his show. And he said it to her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, on the show. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was a little different. Show. Even though it was out of pocket, show. which I, I believe he was right, out of pocket, right. at least he did it in the in a way where it's the most in right, pocket way to do it. Yeah. To him at yeah. the Listen, same time. I, I relate it to to Monique in a sense because one thing is tip was very difficult to do. A lot of people don't notice that when I did industry shakedown, bro. 
I was getting like phone calls from dudes like, "Yo, man, what the fuck you doing, man? You, you know, it's, it was, I, this, I was hearing this on the phone. I, they were saying this on the phone. Yo, bro, like, what's good, man? Why would? But I was hearing you insult Mr. Charlie. Right. Oh no, you don't do that to Mr. Charlie. <laughs> you know, we can't be dudes and that to Mr. Charlie. You can't talk bad about Mr. Charlie. That's what I was hearing. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like, yo, what the fuck, motherfucker? I'm kicking down the door. Everybody gonna run in behind me and get the money. Right. Whether y'all look back at me or not, don't matter. Right. But that's what I felt like. I right. felt like it was dudes that were saying, like, yo, man, that, that you, I'll fuck with you if you don't fuck with that guy, Freddie Fox. Right. If you don't fuck with him, I'll fuck with you. You know and, what I mean? And you believe that, yeah, that the right. phrase blackballed is a real thing? Oh, hell yeah, it's because a real thing. It's, it's real? I know. No, that's definitely a real because, thing. Because, real life. because uh, uh, listen, I can't say it's real or not, but some of the people no, that I've, real. hold on. I'm telling you it's real. Hold on. <laughs> The people that I've seen be accused of it were dead liars. The people I've accused seen accused of doing it or getting it happened to. Saying that they, oh, you mean saying that they were blackballed? Like you they, 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 they were using it as an excuse no, because no, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. When you're blackballed so, in Hollywood, you don't get an email or a text saying, yeah, "By the way, you were blackballed." Yeah, I, you I just feel it. You feel it. It's literally like this. Have you ever read the BET band? They just list? turn their fucking back on. No, you. Google, Google a BET wow. band artist list. Well, we should get, get that the online. Fuck out of here. I live it. Yo, come on. And come come on. Pass. Pass. Come come on. And nobody's supposed to like them look in the same mix as Nori. It's just like a thing that people know. Like they start to tell each other, like executives. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and despite all of that shit, bro. Uh. My my passion and my love for making music right. has been my only force and drive. Is that yeah. nobody can, can tell. nobody like, can tell me? I, I ain't, I've never been homeless. Right. Uh, thank God, I've never yeah. had to been. I've never worried about being kicked out of no boy. I, right. I haven't had those issues because I've been able to still persevere and, and keep it moving. I may not make the millions everybody's making, but I'm all right, man. You know one thing I, I see about you is when I, I did that, you know, like, I like to do study. Like before, when I started this. I just want to be all organic, and then mm -hmm. I said, you know what? It's better for me to do studies and be organic with it. Mm -hmm. So when I did about when I did search about about you, um, you can just see it, man. Every time you rhyme, like you really still enjoy it, like, yeah. and, and, and that's something that I admire yeah. because there's been times in my life where I just lost. Love for hip hop, bro. It's hard. It's like, hard. You it's have different. lost yeah. and love. Have you ever, ever, ever? Because I have, like, but I have. I mean, obviously, I don't know about <laughs> love. You know, I, I, I've been what? mad as fuck <laughs> at it, but I, 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 but I think that's what kept me going. You know, oh, the band list. Let, okay, I right, cool. let me, hold let on, me hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's read the band, band list. list. Oh, you got the band, band list. list. Cougie rap. What? Wait, wait, wait. This BT band list. Kuzi Rev. Who's the band list from? BT. I don't BT. think whoever they gave it to me. BT. Come on, guy. Just All right, hold on. Let me, let me, BT. let me, let me. BT. All right, look. Kuji Rap, Craig G, MC Light. So he might be Buckshot, he has his band list. Kuzi <laughs> Keef, a Tribe Called Quest, A, a Plus, Drew, Wait, J Rude. Hold on a second. Ain't nobody know who A Plus is unless you're in plus. A Plus. Damn. I know, but it's the Licks. I like the Licks. It's hard to say. Let him Artifacts, A Z, Damn, Bad C, Bahamadia, niggas Baham. It's like Bahamadia. all the hip hop at the time. <laughs> the the Brat, Goody Mob, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Black Moon, E40, Cannabis, uh, Skip Method Man, my bad, Method Man Two, uh, Afu Ra, Capadonna, Channel Live, Coco Brothers, Freddie Fox with three X's. Jesus. I'm a bumping At least they spelled my name Jeez, right. Jeez, uh, Jizza. I'm about to say Jeezy. I fucked up this new generation. Uh, I think you fucked up. up. Jesus and Jesus. Right. Jesus. Easy LP. No, no, LP. Excuse me, LP. That's the white guy. I remember right. him. Oh, LP. DOC, yeah. Diamond D, Dead Prez, De La Soul, MF Doom, the blackest list Camp ever. Low, wow, Ghetto dude. Boys, yeah. Brand Nubian, Boot Camp Click, KRS One, Black Sheep, Raekwon, Fourth Avenue Jones, Heather B, J.O. Felony, Killer Priest, Little C's, uh, McGruff, 
Mike Geronimo. <coughs> Moni Love. Mike Geronimo? I give Moni Love. It's an old list. Most Def. No, I mean, I get Ice it, but Cube, it still is crazy. Hieroglyphics. The black G-Ray, Sheree on the blackest name. Nate Dogg, O.C., and Onyx. The reason why their music is not relevant to the BET audience, 12 to 19-year-old black females, but shot speaks out. And, and if that's the real reason, then it's very... Now, 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 this is my point for that, right? Mm-hmm. When I heard about that... Of course, How be, did I'm, you I'm, hear about that? Because, because yeah. you know, fans say, yo, man, they, you know, my fans were like bugging off that shit, but I didn't pay that shit no mind. So when you ask me about losing love, right. it's it's the love for what I do that keeps me above stupid shit like that. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. It's, it's, it's the love for what I do that keeps me above the ignorant motherfuckers who feel like that word relevant. That, I hate that fucking word relevant, bro. I always say that. I hate that, that word. Because <coughs> relevant, Soldier Boy fans isn't relevant to Nas relevant, fans. Yeah, Nas fans yeah. isn't relevant to Soldier Boy yeah, fans. But see, the thing is, if, thing. you got to keep remember we're in the listening business, bro. So if somebody play you something and what you're listening to don't excite your endorphins, then that's not for you. Whether right. it's, It don't mean it's not relevant. Individually. Yeah, it's just right, not right, for right, you. Right. When you right. look, People have some over-critiquing music so much, bro, that it's to the point where it's like, come on, bro. I'm like, like Old Town you know, Road? You fuck with Old Town I don't let nobody road. judge me that don't know how to do what I do. So if you don't like it, fuck you. Woo! That's what that means. When you listen to part of my life. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? You got people in the game that don't they don't know how to they don't know how to make music. They don't they just like listening to it. Right. So don't judge me. You don't know how to do what I do, bro. You walk into a fucking studio, any studio on this planet, I can walk into it, tell right. the engineer, yo, bounce. Right. I'm good, I don't need you, bro. I don't right. need you. Right. And that's my accolade. I'm happy right. that I can do that shit. Right. Just like Russ could say, yo, I'm driving past a comedy club. Yo, let me stop and go work out. Motherfuckers right. say, oh shit, Russell Peters is in it. Uh, they throw you on stage for a minute. You can handle that nah, shit. Nah, I would eat it. Yeah. But, but, uh, is, but is it true but, but, when, when Nas was going through it with Jay Z? Um, you was, you was I, I rode with him hard body only right. because with Jay? With no Jay. With Nas. I rode with Nas and uh, my boy Chuck was riding with Jay. And, right. and, and the goal was to keep that situation right. from getting physical. Right. We wanted to make sure. You were the buffer. No, we would I would. They Jay yes. never knew I was with Nas. And uh, Nas it was never, buffer knuckles. It was. It was. It was. It was. <laughs> it was. It was. That was hard. Whatever. 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 Reason why I did that because you know Nas is like a little brother to me, bro. Right. And, and and I fuck with Jay Jay Z hard body, but but my boy Chuck is really close to Jay Z, and you know I felt like I didn't want to see that turn into Tupac, Tupac Biggie. You know what I'm saying? So I tried to make sure that if and, and Nas didn't really have any problems with with the Brooklyn cats or with cats that was with Jay like that. It was just yeah. we was hoping that as long as it stayed rap. We can stay in the background You right. know what I mean and, and, and sometimes Just your presence A right. certain person's presence Can show people That people got Certain yeah. strengths like, and they, like we ain't playing We, we don't want to go that way yeah. We want Let's, let's not let We ready be, either way Cause I swear to you man I, One of my one of the biggest regretful memories in hip hop is knowing that Biggie and Pac ain't here no more. Like, mm. just imagine how big that would have been. I, yeah, I remember knew both, him. correct? Yeah, I knew both of them, but I knew Pac better. Wow. But Biggie was wow. very, very I cool, man. Pop. That was my man. But you know, the thing about that is, it sucks, man, to see all these media platforms egging on these beefs, man, and gassing up these motherfuckers and right. pushing, pushing, pushing. They hit the and ego button. As soon as somebody yeah. died, too. Uh, it's, it, we, we sad about that. Oh, yeah. The yeah. media's posting up, this shouldn't be this way, and then, you know, we're all fucked up, but you guys are selling this beef, right. selling this beef, and who benefited from that? You know, who, right. benefited, who actually can say that they benefited from Biggie and Pac dying? Now, is, there, is this true? I'm not sure if you can answer this question. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can. There was a more disrespectful version of Ether. Yeah. That actually existed. Yeah. Does that exist? Yeah. Let me tell you something. And how can I just, get it? just for the record. Yeah. From the, <laughs> from the first time I ever heard Nas rhyme yeah. to this very day, that motherfucker been nice. All right. Nice, nice, nice. Right. And I remember telling this motherfucker, I said, dog, Jay Z is a different kind of animal. You know, and I said, I know you know what you got to do. I know how you deal with it, but just whatever you do, bro, you got to be, you going to have to be real witty. Right. Because Jay-Z's not the average rapper. And Nas right. is already a, he's already <coughs> in his own head about right. a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he pays more attention than you think he's paying. Mm. So he picks up things. No. 
Word. He, he picks up. You What's that? I mean, I need my throat straight. No, I ain't gonna fly. I got Indian friends. That's some real Indian shit. Yeah, that's some Indian shit right there. That's some real Indian gangster shit. That's some Indian shit. That's some Indian shit. Indian shit. Indian shit. Indian shit. Indian shit. We got way more liquor. Like, there was no reason to do that. <laughs> That was top, to me one of the top battles in the game. Right. You know, that was so okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. Because he's such a dope MC and because mm. Jay Z is so incredible as an MC, you know, the fact that they were able but, but to. But takeover drops, right? Yeah. That's when you, you. Because at the time, I believe Nas' moms also passed away, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah. So. Take o, is this around the same time Take over drops and This was before Because I, I remember when Nas was in Long Island Okay That big ass mansion In Long right, Island shit. Right And uh You it, say you see in his bedroom And it had all full of books All books Just right. a bunch of books And, 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 and you know The see, funny shit I do my history Yeah you okay. shock on it Because oh, right. a, a lot of books He just <laughs> cool. had a room full of books I never uh-huh. seen It was like he's sleeping In a library and shit uh-huh. And um you know, he, he was he's definitely deeper than a lot of cats even can imagine. You know, I think that quiet shit works. To me, he's a study. He studies, man. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't I don't see nothing bad that came out of that. Because right. they, they kept it rap, they kept right. it hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That was my premise. That was my whole premise for the But let's, let's break it down because you felt like as an older brother that you had to. Mm-hmm. So so was it you you heard a takeover? Nah, I never heard the takeover. I just, I, this was before he wrote it. Before, um. This was, this was before he actually wrote the rhyme. Um, Nas This, this was before Ether. Rob, but before Nas actually wrote Ether. Okay. I was, I was really like, he was around me a lot. We was grinding. So takeover was already out. Yeah, take it. I think J- J- Jay dropped first, right? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah Jay dropped over, first, yeah. and Nas was just studying. I remember me uh-huh. and Nas being in the city one day, and they had a big poster of him in Times Square. I, I, I'll tell you something. Maybe I would Google me if I'm wrong, has but takeover. This was the first time takeover dropped, and everyone, being the fact that Nas didn't respond immediately, mm-hmm. the world was saying Nas was over. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if yeah, you no, remember. No. Oh yeah, that's yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 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 he took too long. He took too long. Everybody was saying. I knew he wasn't over. No, no, I knew it too. I knew he wasn't over. But I couldn't face it. It was like one month passed, another month passed. Everybody was like, man, I knew he wasn't over. I knew he wasn't over. I think. It was like four to six months of his response. It was a long time. I'm not, I remember. I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. It was, I'm not sure. What was it? It was 2002, right? No, wait. 2001. Wait, Takeover drops in 2001? Yeah. 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 All right, now when did Ether drop? 2002. December 4, 2001, and Jay-Z was September 2001. Oh, two months it took. Three months it took. Oh, you guys are wrong. Damn, that shit felt like nine yeah, months to me. Right. But he was, he, you know, and that's a, that's a smart thing about him. But in that time period? Come on, four months. Okay, I, I, I was close. I said, I said three months. Yeah, I said three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, he, he started yeah, studying. Yeah. Some of these dudes and now. Champs, nothing matters. They rush, <laughs> they rush, <laughs> rush, <laughs> rush, they rush, <laughs> they rush, <laughs> rush. Nowadays, you say. Yeah, they rush, rush, rush to respond because right. you got a bunch of dudes around you that don't rap gas in you. Yeah, you got to do it now. Because he dissed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nas is much more, con- you know, he, he's much more complex than that. He, he, he's like a chess player. Like you he's know, a what Virgo. I mean? he's a Virgo. He's a right. chess player. Yeah, yeah. Virgo. So, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so did you did you have doubt at any time? Like because like the world had doubt. Like you know what I'm saying. That's my brother too. But the world had doubt because that record take over. Like I didn't think it was big until Jay did it at Summer Jam. Mm-hmm. Remember that one year he did it, mm-hmm. and then he put Prodigy. In the ballerina that's when, joint? That's when In the that's ballerina when. joint And I just felt like I went and spoke to my moms I said you need to tell me right now Do, you have Do a I got any, any crazy <laughs> bitches out there? <laughs> any crazy bitches out there? Like was I ever there? Like you know A ballerina joint? Did I, did I ever stay in my sister's class too long? Like is there anything somebody can pull? Yeah, yeah. My mom said you gotta relax You ain't going to yeah. ballerina school over here Y'all yeah, think yeah, yeah. But <laughs> that's when Michael that was Jackson. Real. That's like when that Trump. was real. Though. Like like yeah. like after you seeing that, 
Mm. Did you did like did, it was that nervous? And like, that was a different know, type of battle. I, don't I look, look at it like you was like Floyd Mayweather's like the, the guy holding the mitts yeah, with yeah. Nas. That's how I look at it. I don't nah, know. I wasn't. I wasn't nervous because we never talked about that. We we, we when I was around Nas, we never yeah. talked about Jay Z. Wow. He, he maybe once he would mention, yeah, homeboy said this, mm-hmm. but Holmes, he said Holmes said this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but he never went like it was never no drawn out conversations because. Mm-hmm. We were just moving about our day and moving mm. about, you know what I'm saying? And I was, mm. and, and, and I think that was a time when Chuck, Chuck was the one who put the Michael Jackson situation together for Jay. Remember when, oh, he, brought for Michael, Jay. Remember when he brought Michael Jackson Summer out? Jay. That was, yeah. that was oh. Big Chuck who did that. Mm. Yeah, that was mm. my man Chuck. So Chuck and I were both in the background wow. every day talking on the phone. I was calling Chuck, Chuck calling me. And we all really, see, the thing is, there's a, there's a connection. With all, everybody's cool. Right. Chuck is cool with, with Jay I'm right. cool with Nas Me and Chuck is cool You know Me and Jay right. got, I got a lot of respect for Jay-Z right. And every time he's ever seen me He's always been respect Me and Nas right. is good Like So right. it's always been That it ain't like We don't know each other You know what I'm saying right. So it, 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 He never talked about Jay-Z though bro No I'm saying So maybe he didn't talk about it But you had to hear about What Jay did in the Summer it. Jam mm-hmm. Cause I think He dissed Prodigy The same year As he brought out Michael Jackson mm-hmm. So all right, here it is. He he has this summer jam moment. You hear Ether? Did, did you hear Ether before it came out? First off, yeah. Okay. I just, nah, all right, damn. I ain't gonna point this nigga face. Look at his face. Yo, I can go. I just, just like you know, I, you know why I come from. I come from the battle era, right. Right. and I just, Yo, I just, I, mean, I just was happy. I'm not gonna lie. I just was happy. You the happiest you been this whole time. Because I knew, I knew, I knew. I, you know what it is? It's like when you see a young proud, a little young protege of a cat that, that you know, like like to me, like, Nas know. has always been a baby Rakim to me. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And he, you see Rakim from the beginning. And, and I know Rakim from Kid Wizard when he was famous in the hood. Right. right. You know and, what I'm saying? And you know, in your mind, in your mind, deep in your mind, you know this kid can't go out. Because if this kid goes out, it kind of kills you. Like, what you Every, represented it. Pretty much. So, alright, so now, because listen, your face just lit up. Like, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. It was like Christmas just now. I ain't gonna lie. Like, 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 that nigga said, I said, when you first heard Ethan, he said, yeah. like, you just, you just answered me without saying yeah. shit. Because yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel it on my phone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cool. I was there and I listened to that shit. Right, I was cool. like, wow. So, so now, so now, he calls you to the studio. How does this, this situation happen? I would like to. If I'm not mistaken, if I can remember correctly, I think we was in a car. I'm about he, that. I was just gonna say he's in a, he pulled it up might in have been, Bentley. No, he don't. Nas didn't even drive. Yeah, I still. Run. I don't drive. Neither. I don't know if he I, had, I, he's way richer than me, so I can't. Yeah. I can't even yeah, say I don't that. Think he, so we, I think he was in. I think he was in a. Um, I think he was in a car and he played the shit. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Look, every time something good happened on Dream Chance, the fucking train come through. Hey, because that's don't worry about it. So, I so he got the car. The train is a metaphor for our lives. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Life is running a fucking train on us. <laughs> and eventually, that train ends somewhere. Okay, so so, so he calls. So he calls you. You think you in the car, right? I think he, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I remember him playing he, him and, and I, is it you him jungle it was just me and him or just you and him yeah okay, most cool. of the time it was me and him and a driver I would imagine right and a driver and driver okay. and then, uh, so friends he don't drink he, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and it was like it was like I just was quiet man I was All like right. oh fuck alright you know and then I smiled and I was like I just was I wasn't I already knew the record was gonna be dope right. but I was just happy that it was so dope that it was quality shit and it was right. like it, his lines was right and, you know everything was perfect and I was like yo this motherfucking kid man I was so you, proud of him man you, just, you know why you know? I love that, that that record is because when he started to rank on him that's, that reminded me of lunchroom battles mm-hmm. like to me lunchroom battles it was like this Good. And if I had to say something against you, mm-hmm. I would just rank on you. Battle rap. It's, that's what battle it's rap battle was kind of like. Well, to me. Said the battle rap was kind of like yeah. comedy. It's yeah. exactly it's like, like if I'm more funny than you with my rap, and you might have better bars, but if you ain't got the crowd, oh, yeah. 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 you can be as lyrical as Gotta you want. Be funny. Like, and that's and that's basically what, I'm saying. what I'm saying when I tell you, I was like, Jay is not the type of rapper you could just try to. You gotta, you gotta. So you think he adjusted me. based on what you said? I don't know if he adjusted based on what I said, but I know he heard my perspective. Because he could have been more <laughs> like, like lyrically, like. Yeah, he got my perspective because he got he 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 got some perspective from Rock Kim. Right. He got a little bit of perspective from wait me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No one's never heard. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, he spoke no. to Rock Kim. So he spoke before he responded to the J. 
He spoke to Rakim, had a meeting. I don't know if it was a meeting. I know they had a conversation and Rakim gave him some advice. You know what I'm saying? And and and, no, and I've never heard this. Yeah. Like Hip hop Masons got to Whoa. Yeah. And, I, and I, I said what I said to him, but I think Nas, I think Nas had one thing about him, I don't believe he does what other people tell him. I think he, he takes listens, advice I think he and listens. He I think, don't drink I, that. I think he listens to what people say about him, and then he makes his own decision based on what people say. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that's what he does. So. But you know, I ain't gonna lie. I was I was I was concerned when when I, I see because Jay Z don't Jay Z is just that dope of an MC like he's right. he just you know he got a lot of fans who love him they're loyal he got loyal 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 yeah, fans yeah, like yeah, loyal yeah. fans yeah. and and he got bars you know he got right. bars like yeah. bars like bars top tier bars who, Jay-Z? Like, yeah, yeah Jay Z got I mean, we don't always know whose bars they are but uh, actually if you're yeah I do know yeah. Uh, Who's bars? I know neither one of you want to talk about that because you're rappers, but as a fan, uh, who's bars? That bothers me. What? That he bars Big's bars? He borrows bars. I like that, though. No, I don't. He bars I like bars. <laughs> Everybody's, well, mostly Biggie and Big L. Anybody who's dead, basically. Big L, damn. Big L's one of my favorites. Big we had that seven minute freestyle with Big L, and then, I, and then Big L died, and I heard Jay Z spit the same rhyme. I go, wait a minute, hold on a minute. I can't lie. I, 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 Karis one's one of my favorite. I, st- I take his balls all the time. The how many bars? Uh, you take his bars? I had a whole listen to Grind and wait, Remix. I, I, I start with Grind and Remix. Wait, wait. Criminal Minded. You've no, no, been no, blinded. No, 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 that's no, different. It's very no, different. The only problem is no hey, one, one kind of identifies with where I'm getting it from. No, no, no. But I'm no, doing that's a little different. That's a little funny ball, too. That wasn't funny. But I'm saying it's no, the reason why the rhyme is different. Certain rhyme is like paying homage. I think yeah, yeah. in my mind, yeah, like it fits right doing. here. And I'm not talking about that way, but, I, but I that's what I think he's doing. I, I mean, no, listen, I don't I, believe I, that at I, all. I think now it's even worse because nowadays you go to rap shows and you'll see some of these motherfuckers do a whole set of a motherfucker's records and shit. I don't, and they call it paying homage. But you don't think but, starting a rhyme on some like I use other something lines. similar yeah. to something so that's you great. know? Like, like, like you it's take not homage, it's a rhyme. Flip. Right. You could use other words like, like. Listen, I'll give you a good example. I took a Curtis Mayfield line and used it in Heal. You know, mm-hmm. when he said, "We people who are darker than blue," you know, and I said, and then I, and I said, "My sister, the black sisters who are," uh, and I don't remember the rhyme and shit. Um, and you wrote the, the black, yeah, my black sisters uh, <laughs> of, of, of a light skin something. Uh-huh. You know, he said something in the record, and I took it and I flipped it. But you know, mm-hmm. that's just that's just studying. You know what I'm saying? You study. I don't want to call it homage because. That's bullshit. Motherfuckers right. ain't paying homage right. to no motherfucker. I, mean, I think it is paying homage. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. No, I said it's bullshit. No, I said no, it's bullshit. I mean, I said it's a rhyme flip. It's not homage. I mean, you're using something if it's homage. If it's homage, pay the motherfucker for the shit you take. Well, that's literally paying homage. You know what? He's right. He's right. He's right. No, he's right. You fucking me up. You know what I mean? He's right. He's right. He's oh, right. my light skin right. sister, can't you tell? You're just a service of a dog deep well. That's Curtis Mayfield. No, no, he's right. It ain't he's right. right. He's he's right. right. What did I say? I said, no, I, said, I said, Nori know this, and Nori know that, but Nori know that, because Nori bugged that. What the fuck is that from? Bo know this, Bo know that, yeah. Bo know Jack. And that but it's a rhyme flip. flip. It ain't no. homage, it's a no. rhyme flip, bro. I, I, for me, it was homage. Because, because if it was homage, you would have said, I got that part from so and so, big up to him yeah, for that. Nah, 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 that's nah, that's, that's semantics. That's not semantics. Yeah, man, it's semantics. It's semantics. That's homage. That's not homage. Yeah. You know it's just a rhyme flip. There's nothing wrong yeah. with a rhyme flip, bro. I think you got me. As, a, as an artist, yeah. you're saying one thing, but as a fan, I can tell you this. When you say something like, no way, no this, and no one go, okay. As far as a hip hop fan, I go, okay, he pays attention to hip hop. Yeah. He can quote something from back in the day. I will accept that. Or somebody comes in and like, it's not good jungles, the times make me wonder how it keeps going under. And then they go to another verse, I'm like, that's them paying homage. But when you take a fucking verse, that's no, no, another verse is Like when you say when the Remy's in the system, ain't no telling how the fuck am I gonna diss them? That's what these hoes been yelling. See, I credit it to the same thing. No, I could give you like the little key, but once you go past that, you fucking, you know, you went from paying out to the taking a fucking verse. I think the innuendo of a rhyme is to remind you of something else. That's to homage. To me, it's paying homage. 
But maybe not you. I'm not an MC. When you take so, a rhyme, I'm so like, I'll give you a good right example. Right. Let me give you an example. Okay. Oh, As a DJ, I loved it. All right, but you. I'll, I'll mix that listen, shit same. the fuck out. But if you've been DJ 34 years, right? Let me say something. You 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 quote an APMD line. Yeah. I mean, not an APMD line. Public Enemy line. And you know, so people who came before you, mm-hmm. that's considered as homage. Correct? No, I wasn't doing it to pay homage. Okay. I was using a rhyme flip. I was flipping around. If somebody do a DJ routine from, me. let's say, let's say Grandmaster Flash do a DJ this. routine, right? right? And somebody knows his, he plays the same exact records in the same form he played them, and they don't acknowledge that as homage. This is not homage. Well, that's if they don't acknowledge it. That's my point. That's <laughs> but, my point. But to me, that's my point. But to me, usually the MC that uses lines that we all kind of universally homage. know, they know that we know. But the that homage line, homage. the homage line is bullshit to make them be to, so people don't critique them for buying somebody's shit if they not. But you're calling it a flip. It's a, but if they're flipping it in the lyrics, so that's like. It's different. If it's a line, it's a different. If it's a verse, it's biting. No, no, I'm not saying verse. I'm talk- I like the, the when they start the rhyme. That's a flip. It's just a rhyme flip. That's all. And it, that's okay. It's just it, it's okay if you're nice and you flip it and it and it works. But wow. saying that is homage to me is an excuse. I don't think that's homage. That's I that. think homage is, is the common line, and once you go past it, you you're you're I still think a verse it territory. It's subjective if you think it's homage. Yeah, it's subjective to who's doing it and how. Like I hear a lot of. Young cats try to see Buster Rhymes post a picture with uh, with Migos um, offset on his hairstyle, hairstyle, and I think Buster put his picture right next to offset and said, "Thank you," but. It's not the other way around. In your opinion, do you think? No, that's that's called a hair flip. (laughs) (laughs) Right. No, but (laughs) and it's not the same. It's the same. It's the same. You mean like? Hair goes one guy who did this, the same exact style. Did you say hair goes one guy? <laughs> hair goes one guy. Hair goes one guy. Hey, guy. I knew a girl with super it. hair. She had <laughs> super <laughs> hair. No more. So, you took my beard, bro? And, and, uh, and Big Phil. Oh, I, I don't bro. think Migos, I don't think Migos, um, what's my man? His name is uh, Offset. Offset. Offset, right? Yeah. Offset. So I don't oh, think wow. Offset did that paying homage, but I think Buster took it as such. Maybe because he didn't want to say, yo, motherfucker, why are you trying to look like me? You, you know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. Uh, okay. if, if Buster wanted that's, to say, yo, motherfucker, good. You, you, good. you take Buster, how would he look saying, yo, all said you wearing your hair like me? Like, right. come on, bro. Buster right. ain't going to play himself like that. But, he, but so, so, the, so the cool shit is to true. say, let me go ahead and snatch this rebound real quick. Uh. Homage. Right. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, thank you. Look, yeah. That's all that is, dog. Let's, yeah. People use that homage word right. so fucking loosely, bro. That shit is crazy. That so now, is you know what you should do? You should Has make anybody a... ever took in your jokes, repeated them, and said, Yeah, I've had them, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, I'll it pay homage. It ain't 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 homage. It the yeah. fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> There's no homage in God. No How do they take a joke that they, they take this? That's war, son. That's war. Oh, that's war. And, 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 you know, everybody's guilty of it at some point on some level. So. Mm. Was it Joe Rogan accuses taking jokes? No. Joe, uh, uh, Joe Rogan accused Carlos homie, uh, uh, Mencia. Carlos oh. Mencia. It wasn't accused. He, he called did, him out. Yeah. There, there was a oh, accusation, then they was just calling you out. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, the fucking fucking Honduran guy. He's not um, even. He was German. No, he's German, German no, Honduran. Not, he was not German. But he was. He said he was Mexican. He's he playing on his accent. He's Mexican. Mexican. Yeah. He's he German. You can't say that, man. We can't. No, no, that's, that's blasphemy. You can't say. Why is it blasphemy? Because he was Mexican, man. I see. No, 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 no. no. no, no. He's German and Honduran. Yeah, he's German and Honduran, which is not uncommon to be actually honest. What? Like, I mean, to be German in any South or Central American is, is pretty common. The Nazis case. all fled to South yeah, America. They did. Just FYI. So Talk to fucking Peruano over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of horses. Yeah. <laughs> no, I ain't hey, lying. Hey, why do you think it was called Lake Titty Caca? Because they were shitting on bitches' chests back then. <laughs> It got off with it. got off with it. I don't know how we got here. I don't know how we got here. Well, here's the best part. There's a place in Peru called Lake Titicaca. <laughs> so what are you saying? He's a sponsor. Yeah. yeah. Like we supposed to know. It was called. Yeah. It was supposed to be T 
Chi Chi Merlo, but they changed the name. <laughs> Titty Gaga. <laughs> Chi Chi, you got the yellow? Tetas Merlo. Merlo di Tata. So I've seen, I've seen one part of your, 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 um, your show where you brought these other comedians out and at the end of the night you actually cut them out of your own <coughs> check. What do you mean? Like you like... Oh, I paid them? You paid them out of your, your, your thing. Like, like why, why do you do that? Because <laughs> the good, ones, like, the good yeah. ones need to know they're good. And okay. the comedy game is like mad. You mad fucking broke until right. you make it. Mm. When like, you know, like people go, oh, man, I really struggled. I'm like, no, you didn't. You don't really know what it's like. Right. Mm. Let me give you an example. I started in 1989 mm. and it's 2019 right now. And I take comics on the road with me. And when I play like a comedy club, right. I'll be like, how much do you guys pay for the weekend? I'll go, OK, whatever you pay. Add on whatever amount of mine it will equal to this, so that whatever right. you take out of mine, equal it onto there, so that they feel like they just did something this weekend. Wow. So, but the, here's the thing: the comedy rates from '89 to 2019, 30 years later, is the exact same pay. You will get fifty dollars to MC per show, or you will get a hundred dollars to middle. This is the comedy clubs. And the from night from from when I started to now, it's the exact same pay scale. Wow. 50 to 100, so... I have no idea what you're talking about, by the way. I would like Let me tell you this. If, if, I, if I do a comedy club for a weekend, and there's uh, eight shows, right. the MC will only make $50 per show. The MC meaning the host The host. Okay. $50 per show. Uh-huh. And the guy who goes on before me, after the MC, uh-huh. will make $100 per show. So he'll make Is 800 Is he the headliner or no? No, I'm the headliner. The MC is the headliner. No, gets no, no. Less? I'm the M- I'm the headliner. The MC is the guy hosting. The middle oh, guy is the guy who's after the MC. No, no. Then there's a guy after. The, he's called the middle. He oh, okay. Oh, okay. he goes on the middle, and then I close. Right. Wow. But the club will pay fifty to the MC and a hundred to the middle guy. Wow. Mm. So the MC will make four hundred bucks for the weekend, and the middle guy will make eight hundred. And I'll take whatever amount out of my money because I'm making a, a nice amount. I'll say, all right, cut this out of mine, put it in theirs. Oh. So, so they're not fucking, I mean, they're gonna get a struggle weekend anyway. It's not like, huh. I just wanna break the cycle for them. So yeah. like, no. You do that with the club or you do that directly with them? With the club, I tell the club, I go, look, yeah. you're gonna write a check for so-and-so, I want you to wow. take whatever it takes out of mine to make theirs equal this. Oh. On both That's of them. Dope. That's dope. And then That's they'll dope. walk away at least feeling like, yeah. you know, they did something. to see how uh, shitty it can be. Yeah. I remember yeah. driving 400 miles That's to fucking go make $60 for the weekend, for the night, wow. because I, and the only upside was $60. The other time I hurt was my throat. This is a blunt, it's going to be a little lighter. Is it different? Yeah, a little lighter. Yeah, you're still going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I know that shit is nice, right? Yeah, you're good, you're good. So, go okay, ahead, continue your, your comedy expertises. <laughs> Fuck, he used to drive me back to gigs back in the day. Stand up. Yeah. I didn't have a car back then. He was mm. like, let's go. So we go. Anyway, $60 to go 400 miles to do a show. You got to... And you got free fountain drinks all night. So I could drink all the Coca-Cola I want. But I didn't drink at the time, so I was like, it's perfect. And at dinner, I'm good. I'll drive right back home. But that's what it was. It was like 30 bucks to get there, 30 bucks to get back. And then you get paid. You get paid. And you felt great. Now, wouldn't it be nice to be having to do some shitty gig and you know you're going to get shit paid and then the guy, the headliner surprises you with like, hey man, here's what you're worth. Right. Right at this point. That's dope, man. That's why I do it to make him feel good. And because I feel like the disparity between a lot of money and shit. And you got to invite them on tour anyway. Most invite them time. on tour? No mask, come on. But I, I even think I'm almost done. Uh, I can do one more bottle. Another bottle? I can do one more bottle. Yeah, no more bottle. Calmate, Victor. Nah, see me? Uh, that's why I drink this, 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 this shit. Cause I, I'm more wet. Yeah, I drink That's that. how I leave bitches pussies. <laughs> what? <laughs> more wet, motherfucker. More wet. <laughs> that was hard. More wet. Okay, I get it now. I want to hear that in the song. But I just want to know it when I hear myself go. Yeah. So I got to say you said it, then I'm paying homage. Yeah, right? <laughs> right, right Not right, even. Right. Just say my name, goddammit. You know that shit rhymes with Russell? Motherfuckers don't do credits no more, so. Well, nah, I know. No, no. He just but said will you include me in a fucking rhyme? Do, 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 do you think, um, do you 
think yeah, right? that this generation is doomed? No, you know, here's the thing. People can only be stupid for so long, and then their logic kicks and goes, what the fuck, enough. You sure all the life is like a turn believe that. out to like idiocracy? <laughs> you ever seen no. that movie, Idiocracy? Yeah, yeah, I know, but people hit a wall with it, and they go, okay, now that's it, that's enough, that's too stupid. They don't hit a wall, something happens that the wall hits them. Either way, they stop, they go, uh-uh. And the idiots will fucking stay there, and the smart people right. will move around, it's like a tang, and they'll keep going to the next level. While the others keep walking into the fucking wall back and forth. Mm. I forgot what the question was. Uh, you think... Uh, you answered it very well, my friend. Fucking genius. <laughs> this generation... Romeo. I was doing uh, some sort of bachata song. <laughs> Just pull out your heart, buddy. Is that ever do it? No, no. I was playing on it. Pass my phone, Puck. <laughs> it's it's on right now. All right, so how did you guys connect? Finally. How this, the fuck did we connect? Because this is Russ, I got a call from from Because uh, both of you guys are drink chance worthy, but the fact that we can have you guys I'm together. A, I'm gonna tell you how it happened. Russ was playing, okay. Russ was playing Radio City. And and I wonder if it was it Matt, yeah, Radio City Music Hall, okay. and I wonder nice if it was, it was, was Matt, it was it Master, no, Marco Polo called me and said, yo, man, Russell Peters want to know if you'll, if Could you'll, you rap Marco Polo? Like that Marco same, Polo, my like, Canadian no, brother. Could you rap, does, Polo is Polo, Marco Polo is a producer. No, but he doesn't, he work a lot with Master Ace, he does a lot of shit with Master Ace. Marco Polo, Master Ace, Rusty Jux. Yeah, so he said, yo, man, Russell Peters want to meet you, yo. He, he, he got a couple tickets for you to come to his comedy show. So I was like, all right, dope. So I went, and it was, he said, after, after, after the show's over, they got like a backstage thing or whatever, man. And then I just went back there, and I seen all these fucking, all my hip-hop icons. It was like Mount Rushmore back there, man. I uh, seen Mel and uh, Herc and all these. I said, holy fuck, man. <laughs> I, I felt like and you I, didn't know who he was at first. No, nah, I knew of him as a comedian, but I never okay. met him personally. And I was like, "Oh shit!" I went. You didn't know he's a hip hop. I head. didn't know he was a hip hop head okay, like that. Okay. I think when people hear him, he's a hip hop head. He's a fucking DJ. I've been DJ in thirty four years, so when I people scratch it too. I thought you was gonna fuck up. I was watching. No, I, saw I was him. watching. I was gonna show you a clip of yourself fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find one, just so you know. I tried. <laughs> I told you when I first met him. I told him my favorite shit used to juggle when I make mixtapes. Oh, yeah, Indian style, Indian style, Indian these Indian. Band, Josh Shiki, oh, Indian style. God. And then I would just start getting faster. Indian style, Indian style, Indian style, Indian style, Indian style. Indian style. Indian style. I used Cuban connection for me for the Cuban. Oh, Cuban connection. 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 I wasn't ready for that, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna get some cheeseburger baby after this. <laughs> yeah, I've been going two weeks of hardcore eating the worst I can eat. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Tell you, he's selling cocaine, brother. I was <laughs> bro. That's me. Shout to Royal Flood. Big up to Royal Flood. Love that dude. Oh, man. man. So, um, <laughs> Joe Fredo connected with Royal Flush somehow. Okay, so, well, no, no, y'all. Let's continue y'all relationship. So, yeah, so, so I was, yeah. I was surprised because. He knew my music, and I was like, mm. you know, usually when somebody knows my music, it's like some real, real head. Like you got, you got a hip hop head. Like you know mm. what I'm saying? And I, he was like, yo, the shakedown. He was talking. He was going into other shit, and I was like, oh shit, wow, man, I was, I was impressed, right. you know. Right. And then you know, then one day he called me, said, yo, man, she come out to Cali for a couple days, man, come kick it with me, hang out, shit. Right. So then you knew he was rich. I wasn't. No, nah, I didn't. Oh. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> Doing shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ticket shit. When I got there, I found out. <laughs> I was like, oh 
Oh shit! Yeah, 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 yeah. We racing around in all these fancy cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Motherfucker was de- just a row of keys. It was a row of keys on the counter. He's like, yo, whatever you want to drop, just take one. I told Nori the same shit. He didn't believe me. No, no, no. I, de- I definitely believed you, sir. I, said, I got Google. I said, no. Next thing we come to LA, stay at the crib. We have man cars. You can get around. It was like it was like going on a key, like going to camp. You know what I'm saying? I went, I went out there for like well, like a week. I think I was out there, and I was like, "Yo, this shit is crazy." We just right. he's like, "Yo, I gotta go." We went to another part of California. He's like, "You drive that." He's right. gonna drive that. We we're racing all these cars. And this is Malibu. This was Malibu. fun, I man. Like just had a bunch of fucking fun. Hey, you never came to the. I'm drunk. I was in the oh, first. The first. The first crib I was in. The first crib was was in. Uh, it was before Malibu. It was before Malibu. Because listen. I, I invite man. Russell Peters to Studio um, City. Studio City, I was in. You, came to stay, you did come to Studio I'm trying, City. I'm trying to floss on him, right? I'm like, yo, come to, you know, Malibu Soho House. He's like, hey, guy, I'm not a member. I said, exactly. That's why you got your black <laughs> boy. <laughs> you got your black boy. Yo, 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 here's the hell shit. He's the one that came and picked me up that day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah got drunk real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there. And I'm like, okay. Then I realized real fast that he kept saying, because you know, I gotta call people to come get me. I was like, you don't call like Uber? <laughs> like, he was like, nah. And I just realized, I said, oh shit. And, I, and this is the first time I invited him. I tried to floss on him, you know. So I invited him. And then, you know, I tried to take care of the bill, because that's the type of person I am. I like to take care of the bill. And he went to the guy, he's like, Relax. <laughs> <laughs> he was car down. I forget what it was. It was an Amex big boy. I don't know. I remember what kind. It was a black. It was a black. All right, all right cool. I wanted hey. you to say it. <laughs> it was a black. <laughs> it was like I take care of. Them. I had the old blacky knuckles car. So I was like, so this is how I do this. So I do this. So I do it. Because I was like, all right, cool. He took care of this bill. But then I had my wife's bill downstairs. So I was like, all right, cool. You took care of this. This is, this is us. Because, you know, we went upstairs. But I got outside. I said, yo, let me just, I, I should just take care of this right now. He said, oh, give me that one too. I said, oh, shit. This guy's getting that guapalina. <laughs> <laughs> but I also knew he was a gentleman. I knew that. I knew he that had his I, wife with him. She was bored. I could yeah. see it in her face. She was yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And, and then he left and he went and had dinner with Fat Joe at fucking Craig's. Well, um, <laughs> yes, that's a fact. That's, it wasn't the same day, I think it was the it's next a, yes, day. Yes, yes, it was. It was the same day? It was okay, on TMZ that's, the that's, next day. Yeah, that's, probably why, that's probably why I don't remember it. I just <laughs> see it on TMZ. I was like, oh, that dad really was me? <laughs> like, but, um, hip hop, man. Holy moly. Okay. We got, we got three hours already. That's hard. All right, thank you. You could have probably said that to my face. Damn, I got that same text. <laughs> you the same text. Was that? No, that's, uh, that's that shit. Would that let you know? That let you know. We talking some weird. Is that you, Wyclef? Did you do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Tell us some pants. That's real. I love. I love. I love. I love um, talking. Uh, have you watched History. Hip Hop Evolution? I have not watched Hip Hop Evolution. I've watched every stand up that you had because I wanted to focus on you today. You have. Did you like it? Um, yes. That was me, yes. son. Yes. No, I know. I no, thought, I'm not going to lie. The next thing we were talking people, about. I feel like the people... Matter, I haven't been on it yet, though. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, listen, I got you on the better I'm one. not going to be... I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm, everything... When you're hip-hop, you want to be a part of all these documentaries or docuseries. I'm not For me, lie. it's hard Let because... Let me ask you something. Because yeah. you have, like, 1,200 specials on Netflix. Uh-huh. 1,200? No. Yo, you, you, listen, only person, <laughs> you go to the movie, only person that got more people than you is, you know who's just killing you is Russell Crowe. Like when you Google know, you right? on Netflix. I doubt you know, Russell Crowe He's no, the no. first guy on Netflix. No, I started it. He's no, the no. first comedian you that has R-U-S, on Netflix. Mm, Russell Crowe comes out first. I, he's the it's only man, guy. I don't mind. You know, he's a white man. Yeah. <laughs> see, <laughs> see <laughs> before me. So, so did you sell these? Um... Specials to Netflix? Or I you? sold a bunch of them, and then they I started the whole straight to Netflix deal. So you was you did that before Monique? That oh, before anybody. Anyway. You didn't have no Monique problems. Listen, here, here's what my problem was. Mm. They gave me whatever they gave me, and then they were like, Dave Chappelle, here's $60 million. Uh-huh. Chris Rock, here's $40 million. Dollars. Man, I'm not saying I'm Dave or Chris, mm. but... At least give me a little bit extra since you opened this motherfucking door for you. Since That's you, how I felt when I did the Shake Down. 
Mm-hmm. I am you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what I, I, you know what I mean? Same shit. shit. I kicked what? the fucking door down. And the motherfuckers what? came behind me. It was like, you know, else? Oh. I was setting dudes. And listen, bro, I was literally calling dudes and saying, yo, man, you should sign this kid. This kid is good. In the mm-hmm. independent world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? In mm-hmm. the indie world. And there was cats mm-hmm. who was turning around like, they, would, I would fall out with the person that I introduced him to, and they'd turn around. And go, oh, don't worry about Bump. That's my man. He ain't gonna do nothing to you as long as I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many guys got shot? <laughs> hey, like, who the fuck? You, you want to go there? Okay. But then you know, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, Russ. You know what it is. You, 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 you when you're a pioneer, yeah. you got to take some of that on the chin. You know what I right. mean? Just boom. Right. You know you're a pioneer, bro. Mm-hmm. So you just you know keep it moving. You know what it is. What was what's, what's uh, something that if you go back in time. You would make better for yourself. Um, I probably would have tried to be a little bit more approachable, mm. and I probably would have did less gun gun work in right. the music business. I would have kept it more music. I probably would have because uh, I, I realized I wasn't dealing with the streets. I was right. dealing with people that were in the industry, and, mm. and I, I think I'd have been way. I would have I would have toned down my attitude, have been a little bit more approachable, letting people you know shaking hands and being more into that, and. Just political. not political. Yeah, not political. No. Well, I mean, not, shaking not, hands, kissing babies. Not, well, that's, not, that's not political. I mean, shaking hands in the context of, you know, some of the people that I should have went to go sit down with and meet. I just like fuck them, you know. And I, I would have changed that. I would have. I would have really wanted to. You, you think the bumpy knuckle image? Because it was like uh, Freddie Fox was like first, you know, the big Calm, guy, cool, that, yeah, but yeah. he was cool. Fly, like, yeah, yeah. And then it was like an uh, image like. When you turn into bumpy knuckles, that I felt like it was situations and consequences that came with yeah, that. It was. You know, I felt like that it, it hurt you in a certain way. I think way. they did. Yeah, the, the Monica behind the the, the, the attitude and behind the Monica was definitely a, a problem for me. It was just, but it, I don't regret it. I just took it. Listen, I still was able to keep it moving, but I definitely would have been more approachable and try to be more approachable with cats because the cat cats couldn't read me right. you know what I mean I, I remember doing a, I, I remember doing a horrible joke on Steve Stout one time and I think I paid dearly with my career for it mm. him and Herbie Lovebug was in a pizza spot in the hood I want to get Steve's pieces right now too and, right and, after and, this and, I'm starving and, I'm and, I, and I walked up I, I walked up behind him he was at the counter they was at the counter so me and one of my guys walked in the back and I creeped up behind him and I said, give me a chain. And it was an old bus driver sitting in there eating pizza. I said, you stay right there, don't you say nothing. I said, give me a motherfucking chain. He was like, fuck them, kicked and kicked it back like all this shit. Took his jewelry off, kicked it back, I don't want me to. Then I said, no, I'm only kidding, and I laughed. <laughs> Gave me shit, I said, you're only joking though. But, it, but to, to this day, man, that motherfucker like, who does this? He's like, you know how Steve is. He's like, uh, who does this shit? Uh, <laughs> who, who, who plays with guns like this? Who does this? Who? He was furious uh, with me about that shit. Right. And it just, every time I tried to do something in the game, man, that shit came up. Right. It always came up. Like, yo, this motherfucker's not, he can rap, but he ain't the normal dude. He's, right. he's a troublemaker or he's dangerous or he's, right. he's, he's a bully or whatever the fuck they wanted to say. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that kind of shit, you know, you know when you're young, Making right. silly mistakes and shit like that, and, you know it is what it is. I don't have, like I said, I don't regret it because I was still able to focus on music. You know what I mean? But I, I, don't, I think I hurt myself a lot of times by not being so approachable. What do you think about this Nipsey Hustle shit? Because in a lot of ways, we all got that rebellious attitude. We mm-hmm. all got the, you know, the hood. Let's, let's represent. Let's try. Let's try to go back to the hood and let's let's do this. And sometimes that one million percent works, and, and most of the time it one million percent works. But then there's that time that that five percent of the time that overlooks the ninety five percent of the time where it mm-hmm. doesn't. Mm-hmm. And this is just a tragic situation. I don't know if you ever met. Him I before. never did. I felt like I know him. I think if, if I, everyone, if, think I, if I met him, I'd probably be more sad, even right. more sad right. than I was to see that he passed away or that he was kept murdered, that he was murdered like that. Right. Um, I, I, I think that guys like him. You know, they come every once in a while. You know, right. they 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 very, they, special. very in, a special individual that comes every once in a while that is able to that every once in a while that he's able to impact the culture of hip hop. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? With, with with what he does, whether it's good deeds or his music or whatever the case. Yeah. I, I think it's sad that you know 
that that happened to him in his own neighborhood. I don't think people should be afraid of their communities, though. No, I don't I, think so. I don't Literally think people either. should not go back to their communities and do things like that. Right. I, I don't think that you should. You do. People should say, "No, don't go back to your community." Like, if you're gonna do good, you have to do good where good is needed. Right. You know, so whether you do it in your own community or a community that's similar to yours, it doesn't. It, it doesn't mean that that can't happen. Right. To me, something just as bad is when. You know, you go into a corporate America and it's pumping you to sell records to be somebody you're not. Right. And you still end up getting robbed and shot. And they, right. You know, so to it me... It could happen anywhere. It could happen right. anywhere, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I just think it's, 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 it's unfortunate that we do these things to each other. So right now, the energy right now, like I'm always on Twitter saying, let's keep that Nipsey hu Hustle energy. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where you can reach out the to Cassidy. Let's give Freddie Fox's flowers now. Yeah, yeah. Yo, my, yo, my nigga Nori. Nigga say, let's nigga, give Russell you see, his, his, his see next pieces. tiger bone shot now. All of these fucking he frivolous beasts. You know what I'm saying? High yeah. high Cash Get these frivolous like, I think it's so dope dope that, I mean, I hope it lasts yeah. like, And all the gangs are uniting Like, we need that yeah. energy yeah. to keep yeah. going yeah. Yeah. Keep going, you know and, going. And, and it's funny because There's people that have been hitting me up And they just be hashtagging The marathon continues mm -hmm. Yeah, People that I didn't think would hashtag that And it shows you how much What Nipsey did yeah, Is we permeating Everything in hip hop right now, like in the community. I think, so, I think, I, as long as that shit stays and sticks, man, and, and, and as the long as long as it sticks, because all it takes is one asshole to fuck it up for everybody. Well, which well, always happens, well, but always look at it like we that. all need well, to be prepared for that. that one asshole. And we, 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 that's and what happened. Yeah. You know, with, with, the, with Nipsey. That yeah. one asshole. Yeah. yeah. So now you got to think about it as. You think about Bum B, he just fucking. He had to shoot a dude. Yeah, he had to shoot a dude. He had to shoot a dude. Protect yeah. himself. You heard about that, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, he man. had to do that. That's good. I'm not mad at him. I mean, that's, yeah. You know, hey, let's so, so, so listen, LL, LL, LL beat the motherfucker. He beat the oh, Daniel yeah, I got him to talk about it. I got him to talk about it on Drink Chips. I got him to talk about it. And what's fucked up is that I just. I mean, I don't want to put my business out there and what I got in my crib, but I just moved my joint because I have a, I have a, a baby that's about to be one year old and she's starting to move around and I and have my joint next to the bed. And I'm like, ah, I don't want it because she might grab it or something. Oh, so no. I just moved it to another room, but the yeah. Bum B joint made me feel like, nah, I need it back next no, to the bed. No, but you can put it in the pillowcase. You can put it in a level like, I, I went in the crib in Malibu. You, you didn't go to that crib? Put it in I went in case. Malibu. It's a, it's a crib, you put it right there, and, and you can put you and your wife's fingerprint. And it was like this, boom, and the shit just on released. The, on the joint? On the joint. Like, you can put it on the wall where your, the baby can't reach it. Like, this is some ill Republican motherfucker crib that I, I rented. Oh, I've been to that crib. No, I've been to that crib. I've been to that crib. And, and all all you know, the hell, I'm the hell. All you gotta do is put your thumb or your wife's thumb. It's, I think it takes about the three fingerprints. And they'll, they go like this, and the shit just releases. Cause yeah, man. But I don't, but I don't feel safe without it right next to my not, If it's not, if it's not, if it's, if it's the child, like Personally. playing around with it, like you could, you could physically grab the gun while it's on there and pull the trigger, and it won't move because it won't do nothing unless you, the fingerprint matches first. It's one million percent digital. So they don't want in person. <laughs> I went to the house from the ship is ill. Wow. It was ill. You asked me about the premiere album. Yeah, yeah, please. The uh, called Collection. Yes. Yeah, a bunch of joints he did for me. He didn't do personally for me, but I right. do, that, the collection is a bunch of premier stuff right. that he's yeah. never done a beat for me. Right. He's always given me something somebody didn't like or he didn't want them on, he didn't like them on it or whatever. He gave mm. me that. Then I, I got to say this too before I bounce. Mm. Knots. I did an album. Knots is an ill I, I did an album with Knots. Ill What's the name of the album? I, I was Pop Pop. Pop. Yeah. Yeah, and. Yo, the support that I got from 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 LL on the Rock the Bells radio, bro, uh, this shit changed my life, Incredible station man. that uh, he created. That motherfucking uh, so, shit changed my he, life, so. And he won the lawsuit against the dudes that were doing the Rock the Bells concert. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Oh, I didn't know that, yeah, boy. Yeah, he won the lawsuit against them. Oh, that's yeah. dope. Well, that's dope. Yeah. Well, well, let me just tell you something, man. Freddie Fox. I'll tell you something. <laughs> Wake the fuck up. Fuck the camera. It's okay. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. Because we went, we went, we pause. Oh, God. Pause. Hey, yo, I need the cold water, is what I need. We this guy pause. stole my shit. Yeah. We, don't, we don't got cold water. We went, we went. Like Romeo like, Santos stole my shit. But, but, but let me just say something. I want to say it to your face how much I respect you. No, that's like How much, um, you know, I admire you, how much I admire what you did for hip hop. And I just enjoy uh, 
about. Just, just you know, going through your history today, like. And then, and I'm gonna also give you, uh, even though, you, uh, though you're sleeping, come on, wake up. I'm gonna get you. I to do my because all, when I researched you, all I was researching was like funny shit. Like, so as I was, as I was like, I, I came late, I came late. Hey, yo. I came late, pause, that, that, that was definitely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you roll another one, is this it? Right, no, he um, came late. No, no, I came because I really want to come thoroughly I didn't want to, you know, do a search of just some 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 normal shit. And, and me and you are cool in real life, so I wanted to thoroughly do a great. You know what I'm saying? Like, so well, I, I went and searched everything, and and uh, you have a great life, man. And okay. the fact that you you don't defer from hip hop, you actually accept hip hop, and you know keep that shit with you. That shit is honorable, you know. For me, right. I wouldn't have an identity with it without hip hop, though. Right. I don't know who the fuck I'd be right now. Mm. Right. I don't know how I would talk. I don't know how I would walk. Mm. Everything has been influenced from hip hop since I was about 12, mm. 11, 12 years old. So it's always been there. No, but so many people who got at your level and be like, fuck the motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just I not real lie. people. Sometimes I'm thinking we see about that in hip hop all the time. It's <laughs> not honorable, shit. man. I'm telling you, sometimes I think about it, nigga. I'm like, I don't even know how to say about my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I, you know what I'm just saying, and the fact that you hold it down. There's a lot of non-honorable dudes out there. And you you out there in, in the private planes and Hell bringing no. your crew and taking Not them always. to Vegas and taking them to Vegas. How and, dare they, Mr. Santiago? Yeah, that was that was hard. <laughs> and they tried to complain. They was like, hey, you know, sometimes you know we we don't know where the fuck we're gonna be at next day. And then, well, that's the old video from six years ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I, is, now is I was that, like, listen, I got assistant? a four seater for the weekend. <laughs> What's his name? Fucking Juan? What's his name? Fucking Why Eddie. you gotta be fucking Juan, man? No, this is fucking Eddie. Eddie, Come fucking on, Eddie. Bro. I don't know, in my mind, it's fucking Eddie. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Nobody else gonna drink champagne with me? Nope. Yeah, I'm gonna drink champagne with you. Oh, of course. You wanna drink anything? Jesus. Yeah, right. Come you on, Buster. Yeah. You drank all that fucking old bottles, dickhead. Listen, thank you. Thank you, brothers, because you know why? I could have did a three-hour episode with you alone. Yeah. I could have did a three-hour episode with you alone, but the fact that you brothers came together, I, I, I felt like that was the ultimate flaw. I saved you two and a half hours. No, no, I felt like the ultimate flaw, and I felt like, you know, I felt like this was so much appreciated. I feel mm. like, you know, with the audience and the platform that we got. Y'all ain't know, seen each other since when? No, I we talked, we talked, we talked. Yeah, we talked. But talk. um, and, and let's let's thank the professionalism because we just communicated on IG yep. and made this happen. Yeah, I thought it was you. Yeah, yeah, I thought you was gonna communicate. No, no, no my, my my people's hit you up first, right. but then we communicated and then we. Yeah, took we it thought you were gonna have an assistant or assistant to the assistant assistant uh, to yeah. the assistant. And we literally <laughs> ordered them here because we have no budget. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't want to ask. I was like, yo, y'all, uh, you on a car or nah? <laughs> I'm like, nah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't say nobody shit. Like, we just we get you I, I said you high. We just got here. But that's, that's the point of the sake of hip hop. It's just like, you know what? You know, kind of when me and E started this, we didn't know what we were doing, but what we did know, we knew that our heart was in the right place. We and just we loved knew it. That if this man. shit works, we knew that when you have 10 years in this game, it's a fucking absolute travesty when people say you washed up. Yeah. People say that you, you 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 can't do it again or you ain't what you was before. The thing is, wine ages better in life. Champagne ages better in life. Brandy, cognac. Why the fuck we can't do that as people? And why the fuck we can't do that as our community? If fuck the world doesn't believe that, why we can't believe that right. and then force that? Right. Every other culture, you get... You know, you're Beatles and you, you, people look at you as, as that status. Why the fuck we can't make that shit in our own culture and hip hop? That's why I admire the fact that, you know, you, you got to the level that you at, you still higher. Or who Herc? I don't know if you're higher or not. Let me, let me, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you're higher. Anybody can hire, hire Cool Herc. No, I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Who Herc hired him? You know what I'm saying? You know, saying? Like, you know, that's honorable shit. You know what I'm saying? That's honorable shit because you could have had, like I said, Russell Crowe coming out there and fucking, you know, headbutt. A fucking kangaroo. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? What he does. Uh, that guy, did I say that out loud? I just felt that in my mind. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? What I'm saying? You keep it hip hop, and that's what the fuck we honor. Like me personally, and EFN. Let me they say that together. Our whole crew, whole drink chat. Check out me, Lloyd. If you 
you got 10 years or more in this game, we don't want to kick you out. We want a motherfucking cushion your chair. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that, you know, when you sit down, your shit, your, your shit, is, your shit got a cushion. You know what I'm saying? This shit, you ain't sit, you know, I know that sounds crazy, but what I'm saying is, we want to take care of our people. Why shouldn't we? You know what I'm saying? Like, why shouldn't we, you know, the more that you're seasoned, the more that you put into this game. We don't got no pension in hip hop, so why don't we fucking make our own pension? By us praising each other, by us telling each other, yo, my dude, you can, we, we, we got your back. What you did, I respect that. Thank you. I'm holding you down. I'm, and we're going to continue to do that. Uh, we got to do that as a culture. We got to do that as a people. But if we can do it easier as just being hip hop people, mm. then I, I'm with that. If we can't do it as black people, we can't do it as Latinos. Yeah, and we can say it, hip hop. Hip hop is about to be a fucking our new religion, our new fucking nationality. But thank y'all for the